Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calden S. This episode we're going to be doing a little bit of notorious talk and it's a pretty big uh, heavy questions episode here from our Patreon. So we're going to go into all sorts of cool things talking about colossal retaliation and sets that we want to be made into Hero Clicks. This is episode 485. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Now I'm here to take back my human But you know how to set things here. It's the deadpan human. Over oh, six yeah. people, people think I am funny. I'm your captain. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. It's going to be a minute now. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make Hero Clicks like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code dial H10. That's D-I-A-L-H 10 for 10% off your order from the WizKids shop. Not usable with like pre-orders, iconics, and certain limited edition figures. Anyways, joining me like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna open up the floor for a second and say, I know you noticed that new intro. So if you're a yeah. listener out there and you want to send us a message with like audio recording and potentially get your own audio into our intro, uh, go ahead and send it. I'm I'm not saying that's gonna make it. Got to make it good. Got to be cool. It's got to be fun. It's got to be something dial H-y. But uh, there's a chance. Might mm. just do a, a week-to-week listener bumper. In the Ooh. Room. That's fun. Okay. I like that. I dig that. And you may have been able to tell by the different pitch, the sound of the ooh, but we are also joined by none other than Ian Eggleston, behind the scenes, behind the camera, green screen master, video editor, extraordinaire. What's going on, Ian? Oh, it's going. Happy to be here as always. Perfect. Uh, well, let's <laughs> go ahead and start off with what made us happy this week. Simeon, you want to go ahead and get started? Made me happy. Neither of you said jinx when you both said ooh. So, oh. <laughs> jinkies. I know. I know. It's been a long, long uh, struggle for you guys to break the jinx chain. But we um, we did do a lot of jinxes, didn't we? Recently, especially at Worlds, it's quite a few. Yeah, you owe me a lot of sodas. I'll buy you some pop, but I'm, I will not buy you a single soda. Wow. Let's, <laughs> let's not get into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What made me happy this week? Uh, there was no pinch poke involved, so I don't know how valid those jinxes mm. were. But what made me happy this week mm. was I was able to get my very first chase from good old Notorious... Uh, and that was the deceased Hawkman. I think a lot of people have either pulled him or they found him through various means. But I, I did it through the old-fashioned uh, pay somebody for him, essentially. I I just traded. Uh. I gave somebody some figures for him because that person pulled two. Um, so, yeah, that was it was cool. He's one of my... Not like most wanted figures from the set, but I think he is one of the coolest looking figures from the set. And if I'm going to complete anything from the set, it's definitely going to be the deceased. I think they have the most iconic look. They're just five zombies, super simple team to collect as far as most like chase themes go. And yeah, I'm, I'm interested in trying to get the rest of them now. But started off good. I've got Hawkman. Yeah. He's no Sky Tyrant, but he's definitely... <laughs> definitely good enough to to see some play occasionally i 100 percent agree with you i think he's really I think cool so. i think he's probably like the best looking one like my personal favorite for like yeah. how they look so he's got big old wings. Think, yeah he's, he's my awesome. favorite sculpt in the set for sure. covered in blood like he's so cool like he's I'll, just great dial i'll also say i know like tom doesn't listen to this so it doesn't matter but uh he said which one do you want and he like held out both Ooh, Hawkmans that he had. A gentleman. Okay. And I, I sat there and I stared and I looked and I compared and there was zero difference between the two of them. Never, like, I've, really? I haven't done this in a previous set, really. 
not like intentionally, but I intentionally looked for like any difference in the coloring or like the where the eyes are, where like the logo is, like this, that. I could not find a, you know, in those images, like find the difference kind of thing. I could not find a difference in these two Hawkmans. So like the quality control on this set, at least from where I've seen, which is two Hawkmans, uh, very good. Like this was impressive. That's pretty good. Uh, it is a nice. pretty big pool, I'd say. Um, yeah, you, know, you saw two figures. Quite um, impressive. Like normally <laughs> you see one, it's got like a wonky face or something, or maybe yeah. like some ruffled feathers or like something like that. This guy, yeah. no, the two chases, absolutely just locked in. I think they've actually really been knocking it out of the park. Like just in the past, uh, I own obviously every Captain America. The star in the middle is a pretty tough little stamp to get on sometimes. I've got a lot of wonky stars. And looking at my uh, 12 Pegasus Captain Americas, their stars, pretty flex. I'm pretty impressed. Yes, yeah, a little, little cash, cash flex, casual flex. Uh, but, like, the star is really well centered on, like, all of these. Like, so, uh, yeah, I think shout out to the uh, the painting team over there in Heroclux land. They're killing it. They look good. As far as, like, sculpt comparison goes, that reminded me of a an old trade I had where uh, I was trading for a green arrow from Justice League Unlimited, like the chase one where the arrow's shooting straight out. And the guy trading it to me sent me a message. He goes, what would you like? The curve of the bullet and the arrow was, like, a little bit <laughs> off to the side. And it's like, or just shooting up elevated and the arrow was, like, angled up. And I was like, well, obviously I have to take curve the bullet. So <laughs> A little wanted yeah. action. The w- oh, yeah. Apex yeah, barrel like for paintball aficionados. Uh, I should I should also say, um, while I was out and about at the venue today, something that made me happy was picking up issue one of Wolverine versus Predator, a Ooh. crossover I think no one asked for, nobody wanted, but man, the the just completely different cover arts, those variant covers. There's one where Wolverine is reflecting the Predator in his blades. Classic. But then... Classic. There's one where the Predator is reflecting Wolverine in his claw blades. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to get both of those, put them side by side. Pretty pretty fun. Also, the uh, Unchained, the Marvel Unchained series, where it's like the Pet Pet Avengers as like a little team up, has been pretty fun too. But they're only on issue two of that, so... Uh-huh. Nice. Uh, I'll jump into what made me happy this last week. It's actually been just like baller day after baller day. It's been a ton of fun. So Friday, we, well, actually Thursday went up, drove down to, drove up, I should say, to Sioux Falls, hang out with the fam, had a good time there, went to old JL Beers, had some uh, burgers and whatnot. But Friday was my first day of kind of doing Supercon. So Supercon is a cosplay convention that happens every year in South Dakota. And they asked me once again this year to be a guest cosplay judge. It was pretty cool. I've been helping them fill in whenever they have a guest drop, you know, like a guest that like has like a million YouTube followers. Shout out Frank We Built, uh, who <laughs> like hit that this weekend. We are comparable, I would say, in followings. Easily. Easily. Uh, Obviously, obviously. And uh, also Hannah EDA. She was incredibly talented. And then Mage Knight cosplay, of course. Incredibly talented dude who also sold all his prints and gave all the money to, like, a local South Dakota charity. So really cool of him to do that because he's not from here. So uh, shout out to the cosplay judges. Um, And then the one that just... Uh, was with one of the other judges, wanted to watch the booth while they were in judging. So they dropped from being a judge, and I got to judge, and that was cool. So Friday was a great day, hanging out with my family. Went to the rodeo, which was in the same arena as the cosplay convention. So there was wonderful crossover there of some cowboys and cow gals walking through the convention, and some convention people going a little too far to the west, and... Looking this really town ain't big of, enough for the both of it, us. <laughs> it was quite the meeting of the minds. Uh, yeah, I was Cowboy guy, Ken. The guy cosplaying Yosemite Sam was really confused for a second. <laughs> He's killing it. Where do I belong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was Cowboy Ken that day from Barbie, and it was really funny. And my dad was like, you are going to change. I'm like, ah, but I could <laughs> go to the rodeo like this. And he was like, and no, you're not. I'm like, all right, easy, fair enough. Uh, so one so costume change later. Friends there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
which is crazy. Actually, I ran into people I knew but at both places, which was beautiful. I love South Dakota. And then Saturday was a cosplay competition. I love to see the growth of South Dakota cosplayers. I recognize a lot of them. They're getting better each year. I love seeing it. I like seeing all the first timers. That was a ton of fun. It was just a great day overall. And then today, me and my little brother were hanging out. We went to Summer Kitchen over in West Omaha. And I had one of the best breakfast burritos I've had in Omaha. And they came really close to Mr. Smith's. Really, really close. It's the closest uh, a place has come down here to my favorite Ace Hardware breakfast stop. So I was really happy about that. And then today, um, they also had a Quad City Con going on. So that's like that trade show in the mall. And I was able to pick up a bunch of Captain America comics I was missing from a few runs. And the guy that sold them to me was also a big Cat fan. And we just nerded out for a little bit, talking about our favorite stories, first appearances, comics we own, like the grades of them and all that stuff. And it was just great to like totally nerd out with him. And it was cool. He was like a veteran, very inspired by Captain America and all that stuff. And I was just like, that's so awesome. You know, he works for like the VA now and helps with other veterans. And I'm just like, dude, you're so cool. You're so awesome. And also just, you know, buying comics and yeah, having a good time. Bought first appearance of Dr. Faustus. And then I also got Earth X number one that was 9.6 graded. So I was like, this is cool. So yeah. It was already great and everything. I was like, all right, got to add a slab to the collection. So I just had like a great weekend. It was a ton of fun. It was a lot of nerdiness, and I loved it. Had a grand old time. Ian, hit us up. Hit us with your what made you happy, bro. That's right. Ian, you went on a carnival cruise. Is that what you said? <laughs> I believe so. No, I did not. I was not on any cruise. Oh, I, okay. I could have swore you said something about being at the open sea or something. I know I'm always talking about all the cruises I want to go on, but not <laughs> not this weekend. Uh, no, this week was uh, really cool. The first thing I want to talk about um, was that my brother, he went out to California to film a movie with uh, one of our favorite YouTubers for like the last like six, seven years at this point. His name's Value Select. Uh, we've been following him forever. My brother actually met him years and years ago. And so he invited him out to this movie shoot. So I've been getting a bunch of behind the scene photos sent my way and it's just been really cool. So I'm really excited to see how that project turns out. And it's it's just really cool to, I don't know, have an inside view on that. And yeah, I'm just really happy for my brother. So getting also, all that news, talking with him has been a ton of fun. Just a, a per, having a personal connection to someone that you've been like a fan of for a long time is really cool. It really is, man, to hear from him you know albeit minimally it's just uh yeah it's so fun to see how much he's grown and to see the productions he's doing now so i think it's going to be a while before this is like fully edited and put together but i got to see like all the studio sets all the costumes the whole cast everything and then you know where they were staying at and yeah just really excited for that the other thing that i don't know if it fits in the category of made me happy i guess it does but uh I came home from work on, it would have been like Friday night, and I was just tired, so I threw on a movie, and I came across Limitless. I was like, ah, I haven't seen this movie in forever. Oh, wow. So I watched that. Bradley Cooper. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a good movie. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's definitely worth it. It's, you know, of the era where the movie, it's standalone, starts, it's done. Like, I miss that. We don't need Impossible. every movie to have a universe. No way. <laughs> I'll, I'll really see right. you at Limitless 2, bro. We'll see. We'll Are you see in the TV we'll series of Limitless? <laughs> oh, gosh. I guess I'm just not versed. But <laughs> no, it is good. a standalone movie. And then, like, four years later, they made the, the TV series where, like, some guy approaches Bradley Cooper and Bradley's like, here is this drug. And yeah. It actually lets you access 110% oh, of your brain. So, Limitless, I like. Lucy. I hate. I mm. absolutely hate the trope of humans don't access 100% of their brain. And if we yeah. could, we somehow become like these transcendent like beings that can yeah, just, like, like, control things with our minds. That I hate. That like Lucy was like cool up until the part where she started traveling through time with her brain. Limitless never goes that far. It's very no, it, like. It um, never does. And, it, you know, it's a good comparison to just like drug use and the addiction that comes with that so it's just a fun movie right. lots of good actors in it but there's a 
in probably like the first 30 minutes when he like first starts taking the drug, he's like helping this girl out with his her paper. You know, he's doing all this stuff, making all this money. And he comes back to his apartment and he looks around and it's, you know, just super dirty. And he's like, this is no way for a man to live. And as I'm watching that, I like looked around and I saw all of our like shipping boxes out because we sent a bunch of stuff out for Worlds. We had some like product we opened. And I looked around the house and I was like, am I really about to clean my house because of Limitless? <laughs> and then I did. <laughs> so. I mean, better you clean your house because of a movie than Adderall. So that's, you know, that's that's good. true. I, I, you know, I could have found myself in a, a Limitless situation yeah. myself. Just like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to pass this test. And then like couple of bottles of Adderall later and Wikipedia you're like I know everything <laughs> oh, but yeah like got a lot of the boxes that we had just laying around that you know we've been letting pile up a bit out of the way so that felt good but I just uh I, I thought it was so funny I was laughing to myself going I'm really doing this all right let's do it <laughs> so I was just watching the movie you know kind of picking up around the place but yeah, that was, it was a good uh, week. another thing that made me happy this week was when I came home at like ten thirty Saturday night, and I was like, "Oh, house is really neat, nice." <laughs> and Ian's using a hundred percent of his brain. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> oh no! He used one hundred percent of his brain to make me watch Meg to the trench, which I quickly dipped out after like thirty minutes. He's yeah. made two billion so, dollars on the stock market oh. in one day. It's never been uh, done. Never been. <laughs> Meg, Meg 2, uh, oh, the last note here is that movie is just not worth watching. The Meg is fine. You know, it, it knows what it is, but Meg 2 was just, oh, man, it was just a, such a bummer. So too compare, much. compare Meg 2 to Sharknado 2. I think Sharknado, it, it, they're both movies that are aware of themselves, but Sharknado, like, took it another level because they have, like, a smaller budget and the title alone, like, Sharknado... I think like a megalodon is a little more believable than a tornado of sharks. Whoa! But you, uh, you what say Nebraska you, now, listener? So a sharknado is very possible. If a, if a hurricane is brought it? a bunch of sharks to Nebraska shores, our very <laughs> our very closed shores, yeah. And then a tornado also came through. That's a very possible situation for corn folk. When that movie first came out. I was with one of my friends, and we live-tweeted the entirety of Sharknado when it premiered on Sci-Fi Channel, Hastings. and it was a ton of fun, Hastings and people were just like, why? Still around when Sharknado 2 came out. <laughs> oh, man. Good old Hastings books. Remember you could get, like, the Zombie Galactus and the White and Black Lantern sets and everything at, like, Hastings? They, like, yeah. had a ton of Heroclix there. It was That's wild. where I got the, the Heroclix, like, MCU Civil Ooh. War starter pack and like it's just cap while they were like and like it wasn't even the maps that we have now it was like a no a six by like 12 map is the tiniest map in existence that's where i got it and it was super weird what about that, the street fighter part. maps are those smaller i have no idea i never saw a street fighter map i've actually I think never like on four by either. four never seen a street oh, fighter map wow. in my entire life that seems insane it's re- it's like for 1v1s. It yeah. was it so was like interesting. You could actually utilize your team ability huh. in that situation. Yeah, I actually. Think, uh, <laughs> Street Fighter TA is actually good. There was like some there were some rules written for it if I'm not mistaken and like when one of your guys was KO'd, you could bring in like another fighter, I think is how it worked. Mm. I'll be honest, it Marvel's was very Capcom limited Capcom rules. Marvel's yeah. Capcom's <laughs> yeah. Rules. Uh there were a few people who like came to my shop you know, all those years ago specifically to buy Street Fighter and they ended up like playing a few matches of it uh, just Street like Fighter? over by themselves. Yeah, they they bought like all they bought like six countertop displays of Street Fighter and Which they were one? just that's who owns it all. Which one? Yeah. Oh no. no. Oh gosh. We're not no, Simeon, the second no. time I'll tell Which one of you guys we're not going there. <laughs> 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 we're not going there. <laughs> no, it was nobody at my venue was like super interested in the Street Fighter stuff because it wasn't. I don't think it was playable in modern. It I'm wasn't, which is sad. Like straight right? up, wasn't legal. It just wasn't legal. <laughs> yeah, it was like Yu Gi Oh and stuff like that. It was not legal for modern play. And these guys bought like they bought so much of it. I remember thinking like, wow, those sculpts are so cool. This is really awesome. But you know, back in the day, I was much more concerned with the dial. So. 
I skipped on it, but I did end up picking up a full set of Street Fighter for like 70 bucks, I think, a while back, which was just a crazy good deal. So I have all of them now. Yeah. And they are fun to Red play. Line. You get some older players back in your circle who maybe haven't played in a while. Lost out the Street Fighter. Everyone has a great time. They're, they're all super fun. I played Chun Li on like some random team a couple months back, and I had a lot of fun. And she actually ended up being way better than I thought. Like, still not good, but, like, way better than I thought yeah. it, like, deserved to be. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into our first segment of the episode. We're going to be doing a quick Notorious rundown. Notorious is fully out, finally. It's out and about. We got to hang out, play a little bit of Notorious. What are your first thoughts, feelings, being able to play? I still haven't played with literally any of the set. So this, some of this can be, like, what we want to play with, what we want to build with. But, Simeon, you were actually able to play in a... Not a pre-release, but a release, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, you know, you'd tell us about that. Tell us about your team that you were able to pull today. We know you were able to trade to greatness, but... Uh, yeah, I traded yeah. for Hawkman, which just seems like such a good pull and sealed. I I know for yeah. sure that was not on the winning team. I can't... Uh, I, might, I might be able to remember one of the winning teams, but my pulls were Frank the Plant, which... Frank the Plant is an interesting piece in Constructed because he has something that almost no character has printed on their card, and that is Frank the Plant may be given a non-free actions, may be given non-free actions after being carried, and then he also is considered tiny size when he is, would be carried. So just anyone can carry him wholesale. They don't have to have flight, anything. The problem is... He doesn't get a good attack power until click two, which equip is him. Blades, Claws, Fangs. Yeah. Or if you equip him, you get an ultimate nullifier and like silver or something like there's tons of stuff. Uh, click three, though, he has that Blades power and exploit weakness. And so like, and flurry. So yeah, on click three, it's flurry, Blades, exploit. So if you could somehow get him to click three, carry him out, I think that's super cool. I didn't play him, though, because I had no way to get him off a of click one, and I didn't want to, like, hope that he's next to somebody when he gets hit to a stop click because his stop click is just stop. So, not great. Uh, mm. My next character that I pulled was Poison Ivy. I ended up playing her at 65 points because I really wanted the Perplex, and I thought double target mind control was good. It definitely felt good up until the point where I played round one Toy Man, who has traded mind control, sidestep, five range, two lightning bolts, seize through characters. So just a much better version, and also just sadly a five points cheaper version than Ivy. So yeah, that was rough, but like she she did put in a lot of work. A lot of times she was a twelve attack, and I just rolled really poorly. Um, but in the game where I played against like a Zod and uh, a couple other like real big heavy hitters, she managed to turn them against each other. So that was really cool. Um, so those were my two super rares. I also pulled two rares along with them. So I pulled Mr. Freeze, who I played at 80 points. I needed a top dial outwit. Also, his 11th attack with running shot ended up being probably the most potent thing that I had on the team as a whole because he has incapacitate, and then when he uses it after resolutions, so after you've given them tokens, after resolutions, each hit character, uh, deal each hit character damage equal to their action tokens, so there's a lot of times where I was able to outwit like an invuln, a toughness, maybe even like an impervious or invincible, and then use his incapacitate with triple target and deal two damage to everyone that I hit. That happened quite a bit, enough that it was like worth it. Uh, I also pulled Polka Dot Man. I did not play him. I was tempted because having a TK with um, Poison Ivy would have been cool, but for 40 points, I just could not do it. I had other stuff that I just really had to play. I pulled a Starro Fight. Starro Fight just does not make sense in Sealed unless you pull someone that's a Cosmic and Ruler keyword character. He has two rollouts and mind control, four range, one lightning bolt, on paper, it should be good. It's just the fact that, like, one outwit, one hit, he's kind of done. It's a it's a lot of points for a That's character. Tough to ask for forty. 
And then I'm yeah, and then I'm also asking essentially like, does my opponent have a character worth mind controlling? And a lot of times they really didn't. Like sometimes they had a Zod, but like most of the time they just had normal kind of like random stuff. And when you have minimal prob to like mind control definitely loses stock because you're betting on hitting hitting the mind control itself and yeah. then hitting the attack. So Yeah. I have to worry tough. about two attacks with one target. So it's not even if I hit the main attack. It's like, do I waste my one prob on Starfight's pro like mind control and then not have a prob on the attack? Or yeah. Uh, speaking of prob, I pulled the Brainiac. I played him at eighty points. It was a huge Ooh, investment, okay. but he was the only character I pulled with leadership. He has traded leadership. I could have played him at thirty for four clicks less, but at forty or at thirty, he does not have prob, and this was my only prob. I desperately needed prob today. I probed myself into a crit miss twice. There was a lot of times I needed a five, and I rolled threes back to back. I was not rolling good at all today, and uh, this really didn't help me. But I mean, I still, I still would uh, say eighty points for prob and traded leadership probably worth it on this guy. Uh, there was a few times this pulse wave came into play, but most of the time it was just prob outwit. Those were like the two things. I never once got his special outwit to go off. I think uh -huh. I went against a Zod and I managed to get his Zod to impervious where like this, pro this outwit special would have actually worked and then time was called. So it just was not a thing that ever happened. Um, next up on the team was, let's see, I had a polar bear sidelined. So I had the option between Polar Bear and Joker Goon. I went with Joker Goon on main force and then Polar Bear sidelined, mostly because Polar Bear is Battle Fury, so I can't carry him up. And I also pulled Bizarro. I played Bizarro at 60 points. This is something that I just really don't understand. Um, I had two different people tell me two different things on this. So Bizarro has the whole, when he starts the game, you may turn him to click 9. If you do this game his dial or turn his dial in the direction of decreasing click numbers when he is damaged and in the direction of increasing click numbers when he is healed if he would be turned past a starting click ko him so that makes me think that you just turn him to click nine no matter what and then it says if he would be turned past his starting click ko him uh if played at 60 points his starting click is five so for 60 points, you start on hypersonic and then move towards click 9 normally. But no matter what, you may start him on click 9. And then if he would cross that red line, he would be KO'd. Right? That makes That's sense. what I would have... That's interesting. I've also I'm seen surprised people... that hasn't come up. Yeah, because I've it's very awkward wording. And I've also seen people play him at click 5 and turn him to click 1. Because it does say, like, you know, start him on click five. It's just, like, one of those awkward enough things. So what I did was I just played him at 60 points on click five, and I clicked him normal down to click nine. I didn't do anything, like, I wasn't going to try and turn him backwards or anything like that. But I also had people say, like, I think you have to turn him backwards if you start him on click five. And I was like, you only, it says you may turn him to click nine. So that would be like no matter what, you may turn him to click. Nine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you start him at five and you click down to nine, or if you pay sixty, you start him at nine and you click him down to five. Right. And then if you're playing him at full value. Yeah. Okay, that took me a second. Never mind. It makes sense. It is. It is an awkward yeah. wording, and it's but hard for to like second. explain to people who don't have the figure or haven't looked at it like heavily. But yeah, it does seem like you could play him at five and click him to like one. Which could be potentially really good. Um, now I just I just played him at click five, clicked him down to nine each time just to avoid confusion. I was like, I can pay him at sixty and click him the normal way. There's nothing that doesn't say I can't. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Uh, he had Superman enemy, so on the off chance that um, Brainiac was next to him, Brainiac has team player, so. I could potentially have like an extra outwit there that happened like once. Uh, but yeah, I had Bizarro. I had sidelined Polar Bear. I had the Joker Goon was the one that I main forced. 
he is flurry blades on this team it just made so much sense because um i had brainiac and brainiac can copy batman enemy uh poison ivy just straight up has batman enemy so i can give this guy an 11 attack a lot of times i was giving him an 11 perplexing it up with poison ivy and then flurry blades and it just made so much sense it was super good and then if he's ko'd he goes to my ko area and then i generate him from my ko area so i just always had him and i i wanted to think the polar bear was gonna be good because i had a good old uh, Mr. Freeze, but I never once brought the polar bear in instead. Just did not make sense to do it when I have like a flurry piece that's on like the option. And yeah, that was my team. That was the whole thing. It was 15 points for a goon. It was uh, 80 points for Brainiac. It was 60 points for Bizarro. And then the last of my points came out to, let's see, 65 for Poison Ivy, who is just a much inferior, ver- like that super rare Poison Ivy in Sealed is so inferior to the rare Poison Ivy at 80. Uh, but yeah, 65 points for Poison Ivy, and then, of course, the 80 points for Mr. Freeze. So I had to bend the knee to Zod quite a few times throughout this. It was pretty rough. Oh, he's just so good. It is just it is dominating. insanely good. He is brutal. It is insane. Absolutely and brutal. the amount of times that I was like a character was KO'd because of it was just nutty. I was like, I can't believe it's like, ah, like I hit you and then like I missed, but like I got a pulse wave off with my um Quardian Thunderer, so I'm gonna make you kneel before Zod. And he almost always in sealed has a plus two. There's very few yeah. characters that he doesn't have a plus two against. So he's almost always getting a plus two, which is enough. It's enough to like make him win most of the, those roles. And yeah, it's. I don't know. I don't think Zod's great and constructed, but I think he's worth looking at for sure in pulp. Because yeah, the Ooh, ability to so. running shot up twelve for four. And then also give you an action token or potentially deal you one extra unavoidable. Because it is one unavoidable. Like, nothing nothing uh, gets around it. Like, my Mr. Freeze's blocking terrain, it's like, oh, Zod had to break away and takes one pen. Well, he's got Invincible, so it doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. Zod, if he makes you kneel and you have two action tokens, that's one unavoidable. That's old school Ooh, I Ooh, like, I like it. Pretty rough. But yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that was what I played this or today, I guess. That's what I played today. Um, some figures that I thought were like crazy good that I had to face. Deadshot for less points than all of my good figures. Uh, less points than uh, definitely Mister Freeze. Less points than Poison Ivy. Gosh, even less points than uh, my. Brainiac for sure. So he comes in at 60 points. He's a 13 for 3 and then he has that power range 8. Sees through uh, hindering elevated and characters. Deals penetrating damage but only to target opposing characters with the target token. Uh, Yeah. Pretty rough. How good did that end up being? I know we kind of talked about him having just like such a low damage value but sounds like that ability still can just get kind of nutty. 12 for 3 with range combat expert so he's yeah he's or he's a 13 for 3 uh because of range combat expert he literally could just move up cuz we were playing on the 16 by 16 map so he could move up to like square 4 or 5 and because i also have to engage he just like never had to move from there or he'd like sidestep mm, sure. and that range 8 was massive but also he's just got 16 uh, the dead shot I faced off against was being played with a Jervis Tetch, so he was actually at 13 for 4 almost all the time. And then there was like some outwits and stuff going on too, so it it was pretty massive. There's a lot of stuff in this set that just like cannot take a uh, 4 damage through its like defense. And like so that was that was pretty crazy. Uh, I didn't have to face a rare poison IV, so that wasn't the issue. I did face a Ra's al Ghul, who I didn't remember exactly 
what all he had so i outwitted his like running shot and then he just outwitted my outwit to get his running shot back and i was like oh classic okay, well. classic classic outplay <laughs> yeah uh i was going to do a he outwitted something at one point and i was going to do a running shot pulse wave reset the the whole durations thing and i was like i don't want to have to mm. explain durations to my locals though so <laughs> i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna kill him uh, but no, Ray Shal Ghoul was pretty cool. He actually got my opponent 75 points more than he should have because of the target token. And uh, good on him for not just farming my goons. He actually picked like harder targets than just my goons. So that was pretty fun. But uh, I actually pulled out the win against Raish and Lincoln March. Lincoln March, I don't think, was worth the 80 points. No. Uh, yeah. Sure. I'm I'm happy to see him in the game. I'm previously unmade character. He's one of the cooler sure. Court of Owls people. Yeah. But uh and I think it'd be different I, I if you had him at 30. Uh, if you had the Court of Owls to make cuz he has traded mastermind with his leadership. Um the fact that he could mastermind or not mastermind. The fact that he could leadership from Lincoln to Raish and from Raish to Lincoln was really cool. But other than that, there wasn't anything really going on. Um, yeah, Toy Man was like really stellar, and then I don't think I faced. Oh, was he? We Toy actually Man. have a, a Toy Man hater live on air right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, being able to see through characters is massive, especially on these OP. Like talking the about play Calder, by the way. Why? Um, I mean. <laughs> He's, you whatever. you really you were laying it on Toy Man. Did I? Do you think so? Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. I think I was. You called me Toy Man, and then you said I could never be Toy Man as well. So. <laughs> oh, did Still I? Still waiting for a decision there. <laughs> you could never be Toy Man. Oh, I I think he's awesome. I think it's sealed. I, really, I, I didn't give him enough credit, right. but for oh, sixty points, I just not. I don't know. Not that interested in the guy. Well, 12 attack is just fantastic. Yeah, the 12 attack top And dial, empower enhancement is always good. Mastermind so, so that you can stay 12 attack most of the time. Because 60 points, like, there's a lot of stuff that's less than 60 points that you can mastermind to in this set. Um, so there's a lot of mastermind potential. But also just, like, a Zod, a... Superman uh, enemy, too. He can give out outwit. He's a yeah, great utility yeah. piece. Yeah, oh, I like enemy. him a lot. It, gives you, it does give you a lot of outwit options. Uh, I saw him being played with the, gosh, what was it, the uh, the dead shot. So he was the one that was enhancing dead shot and then mind controlling my characters, making me hit like my pathetic damage outputs got boosted by one, no matter what, because that's how his damage power works. So I never managed to get him off of that twelve attack just because there was just so much to slog through and two of the characters on that team could see through opposing characters or see through characters, period, uh, for range and line of fire. So that was just nutty, trying to move up and then getting like kind of blasted back over and over again was just rough. But, yeah, there was... Uh, oh, Lightning Lord was being played at 70 points on that... Um, He's being played at 70 points on that Raish and Lincoln March team. And at 70 points, I think, because I took him to the Iceberg Lounge, I think that's what made it bad. I think he would have been fine, but I took him to the Iceberg Lounge. He moved up, kind of split his forces, and then I just, like, focused entirely on the Raish Al Ghul side, which Lightning Lord and, like, one of the goons was on the other side. So it took him, like, two turns to get the goon and Lightning Lord over to where I was. But other than that, he actually did hit with a pulse wave that hurt a lot, killed one of my goons, which you can't roll for the goon effect if you get pulse waved, so that sucks. But, uh, yeah, uh, over, under, I think, there was only one game where my goon didn't get a comeback in, and then there's only one game where my goon only got a comeback once. So, yeah, Joker goon, I think, is really good. It's especially good. I, the Catwoman, who has Batman team ability and Batman enemy with oh, a 12 yeah, attack. Good. Give those cats some claws, man. Yeah, the cats and the Joker goons and the uh, the Thorn Vines, who also have Flurry exploit. A Thorn Vine with a 12 for 2 exploit 
or a 12 for 3 exploit so with Empower, you know, pretty nutty. There's a lot of options, and uh, I'm I'm excited to build some Constructed for this set. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah, with those figures, that actually brings up one of the figures that I'd really like to talk about, and I think it's one that people are sleeping on a bit. Uh, not necessarily for that combo, but it is something fun you can do. So, yeah, the cats are just 7 attack with the Batman enemy team ability. Borrow the attack values of whoever, you know, grab your 11, grab your 12. And then you bring in the super rare penguin, who has his attack ability of trick umbrellas. The free choose an effect for the penguin or an adjacent friendly character to use until your next turn. Uh, poison, smoke cloud is free, but only to generate three markers. He also has blades, claws, fangs, precision strike or energy explosion knockback. That power to me, just being able to hand that out, is so fantastic. He's only 40 points. He's a running shot leadership mastermind piece with Batman enemy team player. He's also a flyer. His trait also allows you to potentially bring in more people with expendable uh, expendable goons, excuse me. And I think for 40 points, this guy, he may not be like a top table competitive play, but... I do think he can hold his own, and he could lead to some really cool combos. Handing out Energy Explosion with Knockback to any character with range seems incredible. Blades, Claws, Fangs, and Precision Strike to any close attacker, like just for the pre Precision Strike, is fantastic. And then just giving out Smoke Cloud is free or using it himself, that's great. Another cool combo you can do with that is you can have, like, say you have a friendly character base to an opposing character... You could carry the penguin up, take the free action, give that character poison, and because they haven't moved, you can use the poison through them. So I I absolutely love how many combos you can create with this penguin, and I'm really, really excited to try and build with him. He's been one of the figures I keep revisiting. I haven't found the perfect fit for him, but the last, uh, maybe not the last interesting thing, but the last thing I'll say about him is he also has the brute keyword, so for all of you Dark Phoenix enjoyers from Avengers 60th, yeah. you can free move and attack with Penguin because he's apparently brutal. Oh. If you, uh... <laughs> How is the Penguin a brute? Uh, something, something umbrella. He's the, okay. he's the trash man. Yeah, he's oh, the trash haven't, man. Haven't you okay. seen him fight? He's you know what, you're right. That is fairly brutish. brutish. You're right, uh, you're right. If you pair him with 25-point super rare poison ivy and you... Do the uh, poison smoke cloud as free, but only generate three markers. Poison ivy can make three smoke markers, and then friendly characters that are occupying or adjacent to those terrain markers modify defense plus one. So Ooh, if they're in it nice. and someone's drawing line of fire, it's going to be plus two. If they're just next to it, it's going to be plus one. That's really good for free. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, there's, and that's a sixty-five point combo. And yeah, I really it's, think, uh, I think the penguin lot. just has so much potential. Uh, Gotham City keyword, the brute keyword. It'll be tougher to theme with him because a lot of you know, Secret Society of Supervillains, maybe Gotham City Underworld, Injustice League, uh, politician, probably not. But uh, I definitely want to experiment with him. In a way, he feels a lot like Nathaniel Richards, but better. It's not quite a one to one comparison. It's but not, I, but I it's really it like him. better. You don't require the uh object, but you get you get like solid choice. Free action too. And you're yeah. potentially bringing in extra points to the game. He's a flyer just as well. I mean he's got a lot going for him, and I haven't really heard anyone else talk about him and I'm kinda surprised by that. So yeah. Also, I'm going to try and make him work. At minimum, <laughs> on his own, he has running shot energy explosion with knockback. Like, even if you're not comboing him with somebody, that's what he has. Yeah. I, I dig it a lot. Is there a figure that you've been looking at, Calder? Yeah. Yep. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> easily uh, Hawkman. I really want to use and abuse his, like, JLA sharing yes. ability with the oh, JSA. I right. think that's really cool. I think it'll lead me to build my second Justice League team in my entire Heroclix career, which is really cool. So I'm excited about that. I think that'll be really fun. Uh, Kite Man, I can't wait to try out. But you've been talking a ton of stuff about Camo, and so yeah. he's easily piqued my interest uh, for I doing all right sorts of stuff. So I'm curious to see what we can like workshop together and 
start oh. using and abusing here. So I'm I've super got, curious about him. I've got some really fun strategies with Camo, and the reason I think Camo is so interesting, uh, no start because the there's no God, max. yeah, there's no max. <laughs> No, the uh, a god amongst fish trait. At the beginning of your turn, generate a shark bystander, max of one, and he has free. Choose a friendly bystander and move it up to its speed value. So you can do that with any bystander, which is just fantastic. So, you know, immediately my thoughts go to like, oh, play him with Annihilation. Move your daemons free eight, and then they're charging with Exploit or Quake. That's fantastic. But it also has, if the bystander has dolphin movement symbol, it may make an attack. So one of the cool combos I've come up with, with Camo, and once again, there's so many different play styles you can aim for, and we'll get into that in a second here, is that you generate the shark, and you have a character with Green Lantern team ability on your, on your team, as well as the AV-60 Spider-Man, who makes all adjacent friendly characters wild cards. So I think you might know where I'm going with this. You give the shark a free move action, or sorry, you give him a costed move action, copying the Green Lantern team ability, carry up your whole team. Then you give him a free move action to carry another eight squares, so for a total of 16 squares with no perplex, and then it gets to free attack afterwards, and you're bringing over, you know, whoever you want. Bring over a Scott Porter, have him drop a construct for free. Bring over the de the deceased Joker who can make an attack after being carried. Uh, Frank the Plant is another one that can do that, so... If you build like an Alpha Strike shell around the idea of getting the Green Lantern on the shark and just moving up, I really love that. It's massive mobility. And you can also just carry Camo with you, who's no slouch. I mean, he's 12 for 5 with exploit. He's going to hurt. Two stop clicks, so most of the time he can probably live through whatever's coming his way. But on the alternative with that same trait, you can almost play Scarab, or sorry, Camo like Scarab, where. I don't have to leave my starting area. I will just send this shark out or whatever other bystanders are on my team repeatedly at you, and I will force you to come to me. So you if can you, go for like you a complete map, yeah. alpha or a, a complete control team or you know maybe some medium in between. So while Camo may seem very simple on paper with the charge, you know, just he's a big brute character, that bystander ability is going to lead to so many cool interactions and so many cool strategies. So He's easily been the figure I've been building with the most. He's also animal keyword, so, you know, example build there, play Camo, a couple Pegasus caps, maybe Kazar, throw on the Scott Porters, why not? You can do the A60 swap with him, you can start Hound, he's an animal, and suddenly you have a crazy nasty team that is very mobile and also somewhat control heavy. You know, the Scots can have rings so they can make barriers for you, they can drop constructs for free, any of that jazz, so... There's a million different angles I'm looking at with this guy, and it's all been like, I can't wait to play this. So easily, like, the peak figure in the set for me build-wise is Camo. He just, uh... The fact that... He's got so many interesting build paths. For for a single action, you can have a bystander move 16 squares and make an attack. It's awesome. Insane. It's pretty sick. Especially <laughs> You'll though, probably have some empowered, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if you so if like, you do like a carry kind of situation with like Spider Man, definitely. But like just on its like, you know, just as like the uh, scarab kind of tactic where you're like in your starting area, on these smaller maps, Camo can literally just send a shark turn after turn across the entire board. That's crazy. Another funny thing about that because I was I was theory crafting this a bit and I was like, well, if I was playing against that, what would I do? And I was like, well, if I had a way to generate water terrain, I would put it under the shark because the shark has if it's not in one water it terrain, alive. It's KO'd. So you just keep the shark alive to like limit his tempo. And I was like, man, that is so dumb, but it's hilarious. <laughs> the shark has to live. <laughs> Well, and the shark essentially gets like a pseudo flurry if it doesn't die or if it's within range because the free yeah. move up to its speed value. So free move eight, and if it's not next to somebody, then it can't make an attack. But if it like moves and then free moves, it can make an attack. Or if it's just next to somebody already and you give it a free and like it doesn't break away or anything, it still gets to make that attack. Yeah, and then it still can just do a power action attack. So two elevens for threes, like, or two elevens with blades. 
there's so many good bystanders that this combos with too. Thankfully, Rookie has rotated because that was my first thought of like, oh my gosh, gosh right. <laughs> this thing is that gonna be, be crazy. So good free move rookie around. Oh, but you can play him. This is a lot of points. It's you know this would be 185 points, but with the Hawkeye Hawkeye, your Kate Bishop can now place for free onto a higher elevation with their trait, and then move for free another seven, and then shoot you with an autonomous action. Mm. So. For a total of another zero action, like really, really wanting to play, like being traveling since Gen Con, going all over the place, not being able to like play weekly, like oh, all these convention exclusives, all the stuff for Notorious is just like I literally could it's play Hero Clicks right every single day for the next two, three <laughs> weeks, and probably not play everything I've been wanting to play. It's kind of insane. You know what? So many so Batman. Stuff. Have you so thought about this, Batman. Ian? Stranded Maybe. mutants have eight oh, speed. No. Oh, <laughs> stranded mutant bystander generated in the opposing starting area with an autonomous action and Kamo's free action. Make it back to your starting area and then free if it's in your starting area for mission points. Wow. And people were That's saying so mission awesome. points weren't viable after rotation. Shame on them. Mission Shame points are them. back. That's a I think another points combo for, though. for Kate and uh, Kamo. Oh, it's easily worth it. No, that's so little. That's, I mean, put it on every team. Got a ton of stuff left over to do mission points. Yeah, oh this yeah. Is a lot of points, too, because the Legacy APOC is 100, but he makes four different bystanders that are all pretty stout themselves. Like, moving your death an additional seven spaces and then hypersonicking, yeah. that seems pretty reasonable. Famine has a... or Which one is it? Pestilence has a 10-move charge with Poison Outwit. A free 10-move is... Like, that's just wild. So I'm I'm really excited to see what people do with this, and obviously I will be trying to play him myself. I know we have a few people in our Discord who are huge fans. Yeah, we've got the um, Irene Adler disguises that are going to come out. We've oh, got, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, the Nightfall bystanders, which I don't know how many of those like you really need to like move around, but you've got a support with Alfred, a charge with Nightwing, uh, prob with Oracle. Um, yeah, man, is there is there anything like really busted? I think Damon is personally outside of the shark itself. I think Damon's my favorite because those have no point cost associated. They have the exploit. They've got solid values, and they're also invincible. And the biggest issue I've found with playing Annihilation is a lot of the time, like when you get to turn two, turn three, and you have a couple of these things out your action economy really starts to suffer because it's like, oh, I want to do stuff with my team. And it's like, I also want to get value from these bystanders. So a lot of the right. time they end up just becoming kind of body blockers or like ways to seal off like hallways or paths to your team instead of being, you know, the, the brutal attackers. But with a free move eight, I think you could make use of uh, the Damons a lot more. Just being able to position them and continually run them into your opponent along with the shark is uh it's amazing there's nothing that says you can't use this with like costed bystanders right no it's just a bystander i think so yeah so, so you could do like it with sentinels. Sentinel bystanders too yeah sentinels moving them around like yeah scott crampton's got porter uh spirit of the game oh yeah those can all like shift around chainsaws can move six squares before they flurry blades oh the sentinels are 11 yeah. no, that's what i like to hear Oh yeah, throwing chainsaws at people. Just I'm down with chainsaws, that. dude. That's awesome. Go forth, my chainsaws. I mean, the fact that you're you're essentially giving it a full speed charge each time you do it. Is pretty yeah. wild. He's okay, so good. I dig it. Even outs like we haven't even talked about like his dial at all either. Like once again, uh, not a stout. incredibly stout dial. Yeah. But he also just has, when Camo moves, before moving, you may place him adjacent to a friendly character within four squares. If the cloak was still legal, oh my gosh, this would be amazing. He could just yeah. basically move six every turn, depending on your positioning. But that is amazing, because it doesn't require line of fire, so if you want to get him like through walls, maybe you have a phasing character on your team, and then Camo can get in. There's just there's so much. And if you pair this with Kazar, too... The amount of like free moving you can do on your team is just it's so fun. It sounds like a blast. Yeah, because then you can also just move Camo like what six squares. So that's yeah. Six so squares he's moving for free. Because our pick somebody to move for free. One of your bystanders gets to move for free. Like 
anywhere you want to go, these guys, these guys are a round trip. They'll get you anywhere. These guys are practically united. They'll take you anywhere, man. It's like a carnival cruise. Like a carnival oh cruise. My gosh. They're a dolphin symbol. They're always yeah. yeah, and they're staying together on one crew. Copy and GL. They're all together on one cruise. Yeah. It's important one cruise. that we yeah. highlight the cruise aspect the of this. aspect is the cruise aspect. I don't want that to be lost on anybody here. I think it's really, really important that we get the cruise aspect. We're really angling for a carnival sponsorship oh, for man. the first I'll take, uh, I'll take the Norwegian cruises as well. I'm cool with them. Any cruise, oh, that's man. fine. Even if it's like Titanic, uh, <laughs> weird yeah. PlayStation controller. Is that- Cruise. Is that what we're? Is that really what we yeah. want to say? Yeah, like the three of you and the captain get in this capsule, go down. Uh, maybe if it's on a free movement, I could get behind it. Let's we'll see if it's worth the action. I mean, if that's what we want to say, yeah. No, sounds yeah. like a crit miss waiting to happen, though. If I'm being yep. honest, it's, that's it's kind uh, of like getting into a uh, charged up and then moving into the pool of lava. You're just gonna take the one damage. If that's what we want to say, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Um fantastic. Anyway. Well, uh I'm also looking forward for some cur play, some prince action or prince gosh, pulp action brains just all over the place. <sighs> I'm following recent discussion. Uh I think the pulp action after <laughs> Notorious is also going to be really fun. Um non-competitive pulp. I can't wait to play the Legion of Doom. Uh I'm really excited for that. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. I think oh, they're going to look blast. They're going to look so cool on the table together, you know? So I'm excited for that easily. I'm excited to mess around with Orange Lantern Lex. I know, you know what? That is one piece that, you know, Simi and I were pretty hard on in our sealed set review. And you know what? He kind of balled hard, out. He's a hard start to the set, but retroactively, yeah. you look at it and you're like, there's a lot of uh, team player and there's a lot of Superman yeah. enemy. And yeah, having like a ton of outwits with a leadership uh, psychic blast, one of the highest ranges in the set. Yeah. Yeah. He just, there is a lot of value in all that outwit. There is so few cosmic energy pieces in this set and, uh, that you can actually take away so much. The leadership and sidestep flight yeah. like, brings a good amount of utility. Yeah. I mean, looking at this, I think we were all on the same page of kind of like, ah, what is this? Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, after listening to other people talk about him, he. Definitely made his mark at Team Sealed, that's for sure. Yeah. So, and we were just like, oh, just, like not a ton of running shot pen side, but yeah, Zod is just going to make this dude into Swiss cheese. So like, why play him? But maybe he's outwitting before they can even shoot him. I don't know. Like, there's just a lot of utility with him, and people played him very, very well. So, yeah, I'll take back. I mean, Lex is my boy. Absolutely. Bald is beautiful. Sexy Lexi. He's my man. But uh, I just. You know, off rip, I wasn't impressed by him, but you know, I was proved wrong, and I'm more than happy to be that way. So I can't wait to uh, get one for Legion of Doom and then get another one, paint him up orange, and he's my Orange Lancer oh, yeah. Herald Lex. So that'll be cool. You'll have to make him glow in the dark. Get some orange glow in the dark paint. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Gonna have to paint his base all orange, too. I don't think some there's anything in the rules glow. about painting the base. So. Yeah, there's what no, about there's no rules glow? about adding hero glow. Yeah. I just want to add this some hero true. glow, bro. That's all I'm doing. Find a base that has the exact same stats, top dials, Lex Luthor, rip it off. Oh, it's still the name and everything is wrong, but whatever. Rip it off their base and stick it on Lex. Peel Lex Luthor's dial sticker off. Put it on like the, there's <laughs> almost the orange a 0% line. percent chance that a character in wheels will have that same dial. <laughs> Not not the same dial, but you know maybe the top dial flight in Dom. Oh, sure. Uh, six range, yeah. uh, a trait. Yeah. Well, mm, yeah, that's tough. That also has hero glow. Maybe. All right, Iron maybe. Fist. I'm really banking on you, Iron Fist, to be my <laughs> to be my flight six range yeah. piece. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ghost Rider who... Iron Man is gonna be that fifty point uh, chase. Yeah, Damon wants. Hellstrom, maybe. I don't know. I don't know who would actually even have those stats. Uh, the flight being probably the toughest one, actually. I don't know who would have it yeah. from the hero glow we've seen so far. I don't. Hmm. Most yeah, motorcycles stay on the ground, so it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of tough. You know? Yeah, maybe Vigilante. Yours, yeah, Vigilante from old JLU or just Justice League. Actually, he had a flying motor. He had a flying carrying motorcycle. He had no, trans. 
transporter, bro. I know. He, uh, I rode that. Vacuum. He was quickly errated. He's he's quickly errated though. So mm. they, they, you know, was, you know, kind of haters, kind of haters on the on the flying shot motorcycle the chain sky. gang, I guess. Yeah, shot him out of the sky. Yeah. Uh, I rode that vacuum. I know more. I know. I know well. No, 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 no. That's oh, two gun. That's, that's two gun kid. That's two gun kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's two gun kid. What did vigilante ride that was flying? He just had. Well, it wasn't supposed to fly. He just straight up oh. had a motorcycle. Uh, oh, but it was okay. misprinted in Justice League to be uh, flight transporter. That's that was the problem. So he could fly for a few months, I want to say, and then they ratted him that he's supposed to have like Dang. boot or like boot transporter. <laughs> that's yeah. a good gas mileage. I know. <laughs> flying, <laughs> it's flying free for motorcycle. a few months. Why yeah. drive when you can fly? <laughs> exactly. Where he's gone, we don't need roads. But that's our notorious discussion. We have quite a bit of really cool questions to get to here on our Discord. Our Discord is quite a happening place. It's fun. There's a lot of great Hero Clicks communication and discussion going on over there. We also, on occasion, do some watch parties, hanging out with all the Discordian folk. And we play some Bad Sam or some other games or just chit-chat in general sometimes on our discord if you want to join our discord then just join our patreon for five dollars a month that gets you access to the discord behind the scenes videos photos podcast clips um exclusive videos that are not posted anywhere on youtube for the public to see that you get to see by being a patreon member on our discord so jumping into a couple of the questions that we have first up james asks Sorry, oop, didn't, I'm, I'm sorry, Alex, I apologize. Uh, Alex asks, on the topic of strength of schedule versus points being the first tiebreakers, and the latter actively discourages defensive teams. In favor of more aggressive teams, is it a good thing for the tiebreaker to actively dissuade certain kinds of teams or strategies from being played? So he's talking about the most recent strength of schedule where... If you had just placed higher throughout the day, so gotten more, well, you're going to end up on the same win-loss ratio. But if you would have gotten more points, right, so a more aggressive team, then you would be higher up on the schedule. He's saying, is it good for basically the strength of schedule, a thing in a tournament that can make it, you did make top cut or you didn't make top cut to promote certain types of teams. And I guess spinning it that way it kind of sounds bad but realistically if you're playing a defensive team like a defensive shell your goal is to just win every game and give up like no points right yeah so, right the, so the, ultimately the, you shouldn't argument, have a similar yeah the argument is should defensive teams be able to be paired higher or be able to like make a cut easier than super aggressive teams because like one team is going after points just like regard or this also works for like mission point teams so like if a mission point team wins four and then or wins like let's say spencer white went like three and two but like the two that he lost he got zero points because he got zero mission point or you don't get points for not not totaling right if you don't get mission points at 20 then you get no points um, so like, let's say, yeah, he went three and two, he wouldn't have made cut if he had gone three and two. So strength of schedule would potentially put him in a higher position than points because it's not counting points. It's counting like the harder opponents that you played. And since he won his first three matches and then lost in this scenario, his last two matches, uh, he still would have made cut because he would have been going against really hard opponents. Those last two matches, um, right. I don't know because I'm going to say I I want to actively discourage really defensive teams. Teams where like your whole objective is to like score small, barrier up. I don't want that to be a hero clicks thing. I don't even think WizKids wants that to be a hero clicks thing. That's why maps are small. Super not cool way to play the game. Uh, turns out if it's a two-player game, you should kind of interact with the other player a little bit yeah. more than sniping some points and then would chilling be, out. Would it be more fair? probably but like in my heart of hearts i don't care i think that you should have to engage and for me that means actually attacking actually scoring and if you don't build a team that can do that then i think that you have to overcome the hurdles that comes with that and like if you look at this so like an aggressive team if we're going like match to match like you win a match by scoring more points a defensive team is looking that at that kind of inversely where it's like I'm looking to give up less points. So 
if like points being a tiebreaker ahead of strength of schedule to me makes absolute sense. Not even for just like what you guys mentioned with like fun, but yeah, I mean, like, absolutely, you should be engaging your team, but it's like you're also essentially playing like an alternate win condition. You are not looking for points, you're looking for wins, which is above points. So, right. yeah. in my mind, it's, it's you're just, you're playing like a completely different style. Yes, aggressive teams will score more points throughout the day and be ranked higher, but they should be because, in my mind, that says they accomplished more. If you are giving up points and losing with your defensive shell, like, there's your loss... You did not do anything in that game to, like, you know, get your objective win, right? So, to me, it I think it's perfectly fine that points are a tiebreaker above strength of schedule because these people are essentially playing alternate win cons and they're failing to do so when they lose. Obviously, like, a loss is always considered, like, a, a failure in, like, the sense of speaking objectively on this. But it's, you know, that's what the team is looking to do. So... You know that going into it, and you know that you have to play with like perfect positioning, a lot more finesse. And if, if people had a problem with this, like, I don't know, I don't really see the issue because you really you understand what you're going into with this. You know that you know you could be ranked lower if you drop a key match. So that's just the nature of defensive shells. I'm not going to use the argument of like it always has been, so it should stay that way. But to me, it makes sense. Like, if you fail to win a game, like, your team failed to perform, similar in a sense where it's like, oh, I might have lost the match, but I still did what my team was supposed to with an aggressive style team. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, Heroclix is also say so. different from a lot of collectible games where there are victory points constantly being scored or added to one side or the other. Um, and to go along with your your alternate win conditions... The primary way to win a Heroclix map is for your opponent to have no active pieces on the field. For them to, like, no longer have any pieces that belong to them on the field, you win when that happens. So if they play, if they underbuild and they play a 100-point team and you kill, like, the two 50-point figures, you have won. You only get a 100 points for that, but you have won. Um, that is the main win condition. And then the secondary win condition is if time is called, you calculate victory points. So there would be no way to calculate strength of schedule for that secondary win condition that they check for when time is called. And I feel like it'd be weird if we checked for victory points to see who won the game, but not for the first tie break kind of scenario to like schedule yeah. people uh granted this is all with me not having played in any competitive community outside of hero clicks all i can say is I, I know most like trading card games and stuff don't have a point system they have either win or loss which in that situation strength of schedule makes a lot of sense uh but in hero clicks we have victory points so i don't know i don't really care which way it goes but i will say to me, it just makes way more sense with victory points because that's how I've been doing it for eight years or whatever it's at now. Well, it's, yeah. it's the primary objective of the game. Yeah. And so that being the primary tiebreaker, that makes sense in my mind. Yeah, unless they come out with like a situation where it's like, I don't know, play harder opponents like with mission i don't i don't know how they would like come out with like an alternate victory point thing but unless they make mission points give you victory points but even then that would just make it easier yeah. for me to make this argument so yeah sure well you I also have like a reverse issue with this too because like mission points it's zero or 300 so in a way you're seeing right. like the effects of strength of schedule somewhat in mission points because you're either getting like essentially a full wipe or you're getting nothing for yeah. the most part because your teams aren't killing anything. So in a way, like if you play these alternate win conditions, like mi mission points, you you kind of do get screwed in a way because you will be placed higher. Like you will go against better opponents because you'll always get 300 if you're winning. That's so true. that's yeah. another that's thing. That's, that's also you go against more, uh, more aggressive opponents, the better you do with a mission point team because... The better you do, the more um, you'll get paired with somebody who tabled their opponent through the normal means. Over and over and over. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so like my my team moves up and like KOs everything by turn four. Uh, your team tries to get to turn six to get mission points. That's not a great combo of play styles, but obviously 
an unstoppable also, force and an immovable object. Exactly. And mission point teams would have to adapt, which is maybe why we've seen less uh, Wrecker Prime style and more uh, Watcher and Riddler right? versus Water. the yeah. just all Alpha in side, secondary. like two different ways of a secondary win condition versus just, yep, full on turtle, full mission point vibe. Yeah. So, yeah. Points are yeah, good. Makes sense. Strength of schedule is fine as a secondary Ultimately, tiebreaker. Yeah. Strength of schedule. That dude was playing against way harder matches. I think he would deserve to keep going forward. Just makes sense to me. Yeah. Next up, James asks, Calder looks giant in the notorious unboxing thumbnail. He also looks big in the video. Uh, if Luke, Ian, Calder, and Simeon were colossal figures, what would your retail abilities flavor? Abilities, yeah, flavor, abilities, flavor text, and what would be their following effect? I actually wrote out a few here. We also got to shout out Bill for making a hilarious amount of retail abilities that I really like. Um, so the ones that I made really quickly were, let's find them. So Simeon's is going to be Wanda Simeon, which is commons. There's no commons here. So normal retail, place him such that he can make an attack that targeted Simeon Bruce or, or Wanda Simeon or a friendly character that damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Uh, and then it's just he makes in a close attack, but after actions resolve, uh, KO all characters that have white tabs or common rarity. Yes. <laughs> so he just I murders them all. Beautiful. For That's Ian, great. I gave him who's ready to click it up. Oh, uh, why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he has, again, normal retail, plays him such that he can make a close attack against the character that blah, 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 blah. But then his after resolutions, he has the death effect from undead, where you click each hit character one damage. And if that didn't kill them, then you just heal them back up one. But if it does kill them, you KO them. So he just gets to click a little bit, a couple more times for oh, him who's okay. ready to click it up. Uh, Luke gets turn you into a bystander. This is the only one that's a power action because it's kind of even slightly more insane than Simeon's killing all commons. Uh, it's retail. Uh, and then it's only characters within one. All hit char he targets all characters that are within one. They are dealt zero damage, but the next damage that they take KOs them. So their next click is replaced with a KO click, ah. turning them all into turning them into bystanders. They are now all have one click left. My goodness, <laughs> uh, which is actually insane. <laughs> uh, That's and then, so good though. Uh, for mine, I gave myself uh, come down here and fight me. Uh, this is a reference to the Spider Luke, and so I can attack characters on when I attack characters on a higher elevation. I get to place them next to me, and then after resolutions, I get to knock them back. So if I am on a lower elevation, I take them off the ledge, and then I get to flick them back into the ledge uh, against the steel cage you would say so those are the effects that i gave all of us yeah man spider luke had that brutal flying elbow on you though that is true yeah <laughs> that, was, that wasn't flying that was falling with style falling uh, with yeah. style. excuse me <laughs> yeah to quote a toy story movie i really liked the one that's good old billiam made for me where it was uh, uh sure i was harnessed off uh, really, really harnessed off like I am at work, and just flying around. Uh, now, for for Ian, I was thinking more along the lines of something that's like the not the behind the scenes trait, but it would be something where it's like special effects. Like it is, so he gets placed, and then it's like master of special effects, and he just has all attack powers for that attack. Ooh, oh wow! Which I don't know how that works out on paper. I didn't look to see, but like obviously there'd be like pulse wave and then also energy explosion, also quake, and so it's like, what is the damage actually getting locked at? Well, like let's just make it two to be like safe, uh, but it's also just shutting off all powers within four, which is pretty solid. I'm just uh, a retaliating Scarlet Witch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll Jesus. take it. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I was going more like meta, like we're inserting ourselves from like the uh, above game board to like the actual board kind of situation. Okay. Uh, Calver, Calder, I gave like the big hammer, so it was just Quake, mm. 
but it targets all characters within six. And then if they have the Kryptonian keyword or they're over 120 points or equal to 120 points or higher, I should say, uh, then it's penetrating damage. Um, okay, I like that. I think that's what Miss Marvel was at originally. I can't remember. But I, yeah, I don't remember. I was I assume it was 120. I don't remember. Uh, and then Luke, I didn't really have anything come to mind, so I just thought it would be like the opposite of a retaliation since he's Canadian. We'd go the nice mm. route, and he'd do some old like Timmy Hortons kind of action, and he would target an opposing character, but then heal all friendly characters within five or something like that, like one. Oh, click. okay, yeah. And that's also something I don't. Have we seen that? Is there a retail that heals? I don't know. Uh. I mean, like it'd be interesting if that happened. I dig it. Uh, On my end of things, for myself, I really liked the one Bill made, which he named putting you on a poster. So that would allow me to, you know, do the whole thing, place, whatever. And then it's if Ian isn't holding an object, generate a light object and have Ian hold it. Place Ian such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. If Ian is already holding an object, this is free instead. It's like a basketball. For this attack, Ian modifies his attack positively in an equal amount to the amount the object modifies his damage. So yeah, just dunking on somebody. I dig that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, For Calder, I went with one called Steak and Shake. (laughs) That would allow him to Blades, Claws, Fangs, a stake, and if he hits that attack, he would get to Quake as free afterwards. Also, your opponent can no longer take more than one action token (laughs) after being hit. (laughs) for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for I like Simeon, that. I wasn't sure how to like word this one, so I'll just give you like the idea of it. Obviously had to do something in relation to my bones or metal. So I thought it'd be funny if Simeon's was like similar to the pin tank where he could place on you. <laughs> like he just falls on you and he's you know, oh, super no. heavy metal. <laughs> if you play Smash Bros, similar to like Bowser's uh, down B where he yeah. just boom, crushes them. And so, yeah, you know, some free damage there. Or like and then for... uh, his victory dance where he just falls. Oh, yeah. Just ings him. Boom. Uh, for Luke, I wasn't entirely sure. I thought something to give like an action because of like the bright flash of his camera. I thought that would be mm. fitting. But I don't even want to like pitch anything else because the turning people into bystanders is just hilarious. That That wins. <laughs> I, yeah, and I agree. Then, yeah, transferring. That's uh, so ridiculous. A full dial character and just be like, you are now Ooh. like if it did the same thing that, uh, gosh, what's that figure from Captain America set where he could do that? Um, do you mean like Machine Smith? How he yeah. like makes a bystander? Oh, sure. If yeah, it did, yeah. Like, if that it would was, also like, be for really like good. two turns. You like machine smith all of your oppose like all the opposing characters that were caught in the attack, and they become a bystander version of themselves. But like after two turns, they turn back, and so it was like you have two turns to try to not get like energy exploded or something. I don't know. That'd be pretty hilarious. Yeah, I'd be me. down for that. So I better also shout out Bill since you guys shout out your versions for Bill. Bill gave me the uh, it's called a rope, not a lasso. And instead of placing me, I placed the target next to me. And then for each square the target was placed, I modify my attack and damage plus one, um, which would obviously rule of three. But then I think Tristan or Ethan was like, man, the plus 15 attack and damage is wild. So I said, yeah, the Billy and Clicks and Rowdy Ranch and have the shared trait extreme rules where they just get to ignore the rule of three uh, yeah. for their combat values, which I think would be so sick. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah plus 15 know. attack and damage. I think it's fair. Honestly, for for like a small like <laughs> local meta, like a self-contained tournament series, it would be interesting to release like a bystander where it could just ignore the rule of three and see if anyone tried to do something nuts like that with it. Yeah. Just like the old big Tony stacks where it's like, I'm a perplex. I want 55 plus attacks, 55 plus damages, 55 plus speeds. <laughs> He's trying to start a bystander game. <laughs> start you bystander can't do game. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, 
It, great question. Awesome question, James. We all really enjoyed making uh, colossal retaliations. Alex then asks, and Alex asked this question like an hour later, how do you feel about James's question implying that colossals must have retaliation power? This question no, is don't. for the show and not just a reply. Uh, I agree. I don't agree with James. I do think, yeah, colossals... They honestly, I think have it's it. corner, very corner cases. Does it even make sense for a colossal figure to have a retaliation power? I think it was fun, cool mechanic for a while to introduce it, but I really don't need colossals to have just the 15, 20 point retail thing. I would much rather have colossals have a really fun, cool, long dial that makes me feel yeah. like I'm playing a giant character versus they're actually just a big pog, you know? Um, Honestly, I'm not, yeah, I'm not just not into them having retaliations. I more like when they give them to standard characters and make it make sense, yes. like for the Spider Man that has the, the retail ability. Also, I think that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Characters um, stuff with like, like that. A 40 point click line and three clicks, and they have like retail just traded. Yeah. That seems way more likely. It's like, you know, because there's certain characters in the comics where like that's their whole thing. Like Colossus doesn't necessarily like lead the charge all the time but if he sees like somebody get hit he's gonna like retaliate against the person that hit them and like charge over there hit him like that kind of thing um it is fun for colossals to have it occasionally but i i agree it's like it was a very fun unique thing when it was new it got very old very quickly and at one point it was like too good and just constantly like spammed and that was annoying so yeah i don't i prefer my colossals to just take full effect of like their what 24 click long dial um, yeah yeah that that just seems i feel like if it's a good colossal like a well designed designed colossal obviously i'm under no illusion that i'll ever be able to play a colossal at full points ever in a competitive game i just gave up on that completely but I would like to see, you know, maybe like my 100 point line or 150 point lines competitive. Like there's a few times where I played a Wendigo at like the one whatever. And yeah, 100. Yeah, like the 100 point line and like didn't win, but like had a good showing. Whereas if I just spammed, you know, competitively when I did spam Tendigo. the Tendigo, <laughs> uh, that was a much different feeling. Classic. Uh, Classic. Good time. But yeah, I, I think. The philosophy with Colossals is like, yeah, you know, you could try to make the competitive. And retail is fine here and there, as long as there's not a billion of them. I think it's totally fine mechanic. You know, it makes the metagame more diverse, so I'm all for that. But what I'd really like to see, and it's something we've talked about on the show previously, I know Simeon was uh, really pushing for this, is make some Colossals over 300 points that are just, like, insanely powerful like give us a yeah. give us a raid boss, you know. Give us a a colossal with like a rule sheet attached to him, who's like really hard to take down, like stupid hard. That could never be played in like you know the traditional competitive sense. I think if you go that direction with them, it could lead to some really fun home battles and just you know open up the the kitchen table meta a little bit more. And uh, absolutely, it could also be very thematic. You know, you could we talked about doing like starter sets with a colossal raid boss style figure in him and maybe it includes a few figures who go against him and i think that would be so cool to have you know just a thematic scenario it doesn't even necessarily need to be be a scenario just like try to take this guy down can you do it and yeah. that would be a great direction to take with them so it's really, it's really fun yeah. idea and i i do hope that in the future when we get more two by twos we get more stuff like that but at the end of the day that's just Absolutely. our philosophy um <laughs> you know excellent 10 out of 10 trademark man. dial h 2023 philosophy <laughs> philosophy lock it in i can't remember how that how that song <laughs> goes problem free philosophy that's that's our problem free philosophy <laughs> brimstone mangog <laughs> all right uh the maggot asks if Ian had a colossal, would it be a giraffe? Spelt wrong. Uh, and it would come in a normal box, or would he come in like one of those massive boxes that Galactus came in? I like the idea that if Ian was a colossal, it's not just a big version of Ian, but he also just has a massive neck 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Ian, I'm not Ian in for love some with reason them. is on all fours, and then his next just Ooh, ten times why? longer than necessary. That is haunting to imagine. <laughs> the, I do not like it. When I picture myself as a colossal, the first thing that comes to mind, very obvi- obviously, is me piloting a massive mecha Dracula. But you know, <laughs> oh, I digress okay. there. Okay. I think really, if uh, if I were to be a colossal, I'm I'm. I'm angling for the three by six here, and I'm thinking a bat cave style of the Dial H layer. Like, you know, so I'm sitting at the computers, I have like 50 billion monitors because duh. And then you'd be able to place Calder and Simeon on the the Dial H layer as well. Okay. That'd yeah. be cool. A little like spot with like the green screen. A little yeah, like, you know, you have the whole set of those. I think that'd be really that'd be pretty fun. fun. Yeah, and okay, then, I like uh, that actually a lot. Yeah, so I don't. I don't know if I really work out as a colossal. Big, was, big shock there. Uh, so have you guys seen the image of the, the Mantar? Where it's like a centaur, but instead of a horse body, it's a man oh, body. And then instead yes. of a man for like the torso, it's a man. So it's just a man with a man coming out of his neck. Yeah, it's very... That's what odd. I would picture. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, gosh. When, not because it was Ian, but because he said, would it be a giraffe? <laughs> giraffe? Okay. Uh and then obviously it has to come in a massive box. It can't come in a normal box. How are you going to fit a right, colossal in a normal box? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. At yeah, least a massive on? old side box. Like I guess he could be picturing the Galactus like a box. single base colossal, but. Yeah. Okay. What about this? We take the master mold approach. I am a giraffe, but the, the there's like debris or like maybe some tree tops. And all it is is my neck and my head. <laughs> just the neck? <laughs> Ugh, it's so creepy. It's, it's just like the tiny trees and then this big, no, long just a neck. Big, and long I neck. Uh, I don't like that. Now that is a... That is there the you go. face on a sculpt. That is really uh, There you go, the maggot. Just for you. We've got to win the, the so Hero Clicks for Huntington's uh, sculpt swap thing next year so we can do oh, that. Oh, gosh. We want a, a swap. Just say sculpt. no. We're not that sculpting a that. Two by two, where I can pull one of the palm trees off of Krakoa and put Ian's long neck head Ugh. thing attached. Uh, I mean, yeah, there, are, there are the two by two sentinels that are swappable dials, and the what's his face? Um, Supreme Intelligence. So I mean, two by two switch clicks. Oh, yeah. They do exist. So Supreme that's Intelligence Ian does for come you. off that base. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'm I'm pretty supremely intelligent. I think it could oh, work. Yikes! Uh, next up, Mr. Halverson asks, "What figure do you think should be colossal that isn't? What colossal character would you want to see in a new set?" Hmm. This is pretty I've tough. We have a lot of colossal talk going on. What was that? I said I've got a few. You got a few? Uh, why don't you start us off then? Sure. Um... So I really like what they did with Cthon in the wheel set, the sculpt that we got to see, and he does have the colossal damage symbol. But that made me think, like, man, what would this guy look like as a 2x2 two two or even, like, a 3x6? Like, imagine that same sculpt, but, you know, amp it up, like, times 10, size-wise. And I was like, that would be really, really cool. Or any of, like, yeah. the uh, like the Elder or the Eldritch gods, however you say that, Eldritch? Like the, you know, Eldritch. Cthulhu. Yeah. Eldritch, thank you. Yeah, I think those would be fun. Uh, my absolute dream. This isn't necessarily a figure that like could be colossal, but could be a Green Lantern, either a Kyle Rayner like in his mech, or you know, just in a car, a plane, whatever you want to do. Just a big construct, and they're piloting it, similar to the Sinestro, but you know, Green Lantern. Yeah. And my final is- answer for it is a giant Apache chief because come on. <sighs> Oh yeah. yeah! Yeah, right. The nut chuck, <laughs> big man. The one, I like, like he also has like some sort of trait that allows him to come in if the uh, single based Apache chief gets like five big man tokens. Oh, that'd be so awesome! Oh yeah, A little promotion mechanic. That. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Ian. I've talked many, many times about how bad I want two by two lanterns that are inside vehicles. So like a Hal Jordan colossal in his fighter jet or just normal jet, whatever he did, I don't remember. Uh, Guy Gardner in either, like, a Mustang or a monster truck would be sick. And then I think, like, a Johns. You already said, like, 
Al Rayner and his like mech. That's pretty classic. Yes. That looks good. And then I would say like John Stewart in like a crane or something. Uh, okay. That's like very detailed because he's like a construction like dude. So I think all that would be really cool. Um, I would also like to see the Earth X absorbing man when he absorbs like New York City or DC. I kind of forget which like city it is, but he just absorbs the entire city and he becomes just massive. I would love to see that. I think the version we got as the Prime is incredible, and I really like his thematicness, but I would also just love to see a huge colossal of it because that would just be so sick. Like That'd be awesome. So I like when that. we get our, our Paradise X set, our second Earth X set, I expect <laughs> to see him in it uh, in a big booster style set. Yeah. I'd like to see more like effects that get like a 2 by 2 treatment, not necessarily a colossal, but... Um like red tornado or the flash or mm. quicksilver when they do their well obviously i just i just referenced three tornado kind <laughs> and of no effects. shark no yeah. shark wow no not a single shark in this, <laughs> this shark nato it would have or some like... some form of like free place and free attack for bystanders with the dolphin but uh Ooh, no like <laughs> that'd be so good i do think utilizing two by twos because we saw like standard size two by twos but they had a really big sculpt and i think just utilizing it for like a huge effect so like even if it's just iron man or like cyclops or like someone with like some sort of laser blast kind of thing and you just make it 10 times larger than it normally would be and you give them like psychic blast but it's really good just like massive like yeah, a thor just, with yeah, just a ton of lightning or something yeah just, thor that just yeah absolutely that, uh, people up something like that that panel in I, I can't remember what x-men story it was but uh cyclops tells the team he's like just stand back and they're like fighting some sentinels oh and, and then he takes off his glasses and yeah. the whole panel is just red he, he literally blows like a sentinel from like the doorstep to like a quarter mile away Give us that sight, like a big, like red bubble, like coming from his eyes would be, <laughs> and he's like on his knees, just like ah, <laughs> that'd be that awesome. Be you cool. could utilize that for like Council of Kangs too, where like you have some translucent, some like phasing in time, like time traveling in or out or whatever. Uh, there's like so many options on a two by two base. You know, speaking of Cyclops, they they actually just did this exact thing we're talking about with Cyclops. His like Phoenix Force was just massive around little old yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. So when, yeah, basically yeah, something Dark like Phoenix that. Cyclops. Uh, yeah, where it was like massive flame effect, just tiny yeah. little him, and yeah, he he used all that power to kill a man who couldn't walk for the majority of the time in comics ah uh, yes <laughs> really cool guy yeah. but he was walking at this point <laughs> he in was time, walking though, at that point yes. so he's extra dangerous yeah like untold Huster amount really of power he has out. since he is now walking uh. <laughs> i would also my the last one i'd like to throw in he's already been made but i would really like shuma gorath back in hero clicks oh, he was cool oh, sure i feel like that out. one's yeah He's fun. Only if we get Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Shuma Gorath, and then I'll, I'll oh, go all pink. Uh, the Spectre <laughs> would also be cool as like a larger base figure again. We technically yeah. got like a quote unquote giant in War of Light. Um, and then we got like the whatever the, the JSA Christ one was, well. and Joker's Wild. But getting a really big, really dangerous one again would be cool. Mm. Yeah. I would love to see the like a massive Modoc. Like a two by two Modoc with like oh, buzz yeah. saws, guns, like just a ton of stuff. He's always on the one by one base, and he lo he looks huge on that. But let's get like a Modoc that just has a ton of gadgets and death machines coming like, out of him. Yeah, where yeah. he's like pushed to his it's limit and he hits the Kind of like how like this uh, like out. Mojo. The last couple of Mojos have been like really big on two by twos. Like let's do that with Modoc. That'd be sick, and he can have a big well, you know laser that, yeah. coming out of his big old head that'd be fun bang now nah, i wish that existed the maggot then goes on to ask a lot of questions in this uh let me see his last question was at uh, 11 55 a.m this one uh, at 1 p.m the next day just asking questions like crazy for ian and calder please explain in a 500 to 1200 word essay mla format why you why do you dislike miss marvel i'm not gonna do that maggot. i'll take the reins here you're gonna, okay. I'm going to count the words, Ian. If you don't hit 500. Okay. 
No, I already submitted my essay to him. Uh, oh, it was okay. 10 minutes after he answered the question. It was just Miss Marvel written 600 times, which fits the 1200 cap. It was perfect. No. Nice. <laughs> no, uh, with Miss Marvel, I mean, costumes are, a, that's like, a, that's the biggest thing for a hero, obviously. You gotta have a cool costume. And Miss Marvel's costume, I've just never, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't really like it. Her powers are also just kind of wonky. I I don't have like a super concrete explanation. Maybe I should give her a fairer shake, but I just uh I don't I don't find the character particularly interesting and I, I don't really like their costume either. But playability yeah. wise, I'm gonna be playing Miss Marvel, you know that. Yeah, the new the fifty point one is amazing. I would say like design wise, yeah, it's one of the coolest dials. I really like it. I super I enjoy love it. it man. It's so good. <sighs> character yeah. wise, the trope of just being a fangirl or fanboy of a character i've never liked um i've never enjoyed like that might i'm just like he's weird i don't like that i don't like the just fan obsession i get that that like represents us the the leader or the reader excuse me um no we're not all green and have massive foreheads but us like the reader are the fanboys or fangirls um but they're not you know, even though like that should be relatable, uh, Miss Marvel is like just zero percent relatable. She's very annoying. Uh, I very much dislike her. I'm sure. Yeah, if I met Captain America in real life, I would freak out and probably scream if he like was real. But just her character, especially in like the Avengers game, was just insufferable, and she's just not just not interesting. Uh, stretchy powers, not very interesting. I will say probably the most interesting stretchy power person is like Plastic Man because he's not just. Yes stretchy he can like do cooler yeah, stuff that's almost like, matter manipulation at his point but yeah yeah it's very true he's like totally reshaping his entire being versus just stretching so yeah powers aren't interesting um and then also in my mind i was always a big carol danvers like miss marvel fan i liked her a lot as miss marvel and then her character had a complete like personality shift when she turned into captain marvel and made her a less likable character so i was always bummed that like part of the reason Carol became, in my opinion, kind of like a less likable character is because they wanted to give Kamala Khan like the Miss Marvel name, which I'm also just like, you could have gave her any other name, but then they know, they know she wouldn't have been like a popular character or she wouldn't have gotten like on national news or all this other stuff if they hadn't given her the Miss Marvel name. Like that was just like a Marvel wants to make money <laughs> off a new character versus make a new character and everybody forgets about them a year later because they're not memorable. So they wanted to make it big and controversial by like giving them like the Miss Marvel name. And I was like, that's probably a good idea. And obviously it's one of their most like successful characters. So good for them. But I'm not a fan of like that way of introducing a character. So I like prefer them to stand on their own. I hate it when they do it in comics. I'd like to, I hate that they, whatever made cap nomad and then they've given like the nomad name to like five other people I'm like or we could just give them a new name and not <laughs> call them this you know so yeah, i'm just yeah. i'm not big i'm not big on that could name them like vagabond or something something i don't know <laughs> that's real cool uh yeah <laughs> i mean part of the reason for some why people they, why maybe they did, uh captain marvel was because dc's whole thing like lapsed on it so like marvel jumped on it so right but like that's that's also part of why they made the jump with um, Carol Danvers at least was because uh, stealing the stolen name that was stolen. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> stole it from a company. Actually, they straight up like they took Shazam, Captain yeah. Marvel, period from some company because it was they were going to like, like basically sue them, right? Like they yeah. were like, okay, we'll buy them from you. They're like, well, we don't want to sell them, and it's like, okay, well then we'll sue you. We'll yeah, see you in this, court. This oh, was okay. Like, ancient history this is like yeah, early basically. comics like 1940s. oh sweet for it uh but <laughs> yes they said like captain marvel had a power set that was too similar to superman and he looked too similar to superman because like back then people didn't know how to draw too different so it was like generic man with black hair he's yeah. strong <laughs> see this picture of him holding things over his head and they were like that's our whole thing and so that's yeah they literally uh got the yeah. Uh, trademark they like sued and got like the trademark or whatever and then they just forgot to re-up it one year or like ever yeah and marvel t just took it and so well they were like uh marvel's kind of our name and it's like yeah but he was made and you guys are timely I'm like yeah but we're marvel now and uh you slipped up so it's ours haha -ha, eat it yeah <laughs> they just I, find, ran with it. I find the whole story hilarious because 
they're all villains. Yeah. They they all like got yeah, scum to them kind of. None of this is none of them are being particularly good people. No. Um all I'll yeah. say about uh Ms. Marvel is it's okay to not like characters. It's okay to like not also be that. a fan of every single character. There's a ton of Marvel and DC they characters that I'm not yeah. going to collect and I'm not going to like care about ever. Marrow from the X-Men do not care about her. <laughs> I don't care about Bone Spur Grower Lady. Like literally like it's a cool power, it's a cool concept. I don't care about anything with that. There's too much to read in the day to care about literally everything all the time always and give it a fair shake. So, yeah, I think some characters you can just write off for sure. Yeah. Unless it's uh, What about Spike Avengers from X-Men Unleashed. Evolution? Uh, oh, Spike, Spike is a cool. bone marrow growing guy, so maybe yeah, give him well. He also really likes skateboarding. He's a male, so. I'll absolutely <laughs> give him a fair shake because he's so interesting. Yeah, so then he also cool. used like capoeira, like fighting techniques or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen X Men Evolution in years. All, I know you eventually grew like bone years. armor over his bone like his normal skin like grew bone armor over it extra it's kind of like bad guy spike and it's all like, i know what, is like what are mcdonald's doing? or burger king released like uh mini cds for that oh, did they show oh. yeah it was like the gamecube discs how they're like half the size they oh. essentially did that but for that like tv show so you could watch one episode and then also play terrible game that they reskinned with like characters from it Although I will say that was one of the coolest like variations of the X Men they've ever done. Like, if you haven't seen X Men Evolution, it's worth a watch. It's a quick watch, by the way. Uh, yeah. It's a ton of fun. It's also closer, Matt Reed. much closer to uh, Unlimited or not Unlimited. Jeez. Oh, Wolverine and the X Men? Uh, no. What's Gosh Ultimates? It's way closer oh, to like, sure. Ultimate X Men. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Or also, yeah. Anyways, we don't have to get on diatribe about X Men Evolution. Good show. Check it out. Ultimate X Men. Good stuff. Check it out. Well edgy stuff check it out <laughs> matt reed asks uh based on what we know on the upcoming sets what figure do you think will be the meta staple will it be deadpool with the new special dice will it be a new peanut base a pe- matt reed i don't there's not gonna be any new peanut bases in wheels of vengeance I hate to tell you that matt reed uh do you mean twinkie uh yeah. will it be a new twinkie base from no wheels pe- of vengeance no peanut bases uh Pick a character that you think we will see in the top 32 next year. I assume he means at oh, Worlds. Oh, gosh. And see who gets one right. Mm. Uh, and he said the Ian and Luke's, multiple Luke's. That, that's really who. easy. That this last part of the question, the top 32. If yeah. Konshu is not in the top 32, I will oh. be absolutely floored. Ooh, I was going to go okay. with figures that we don't know what they do yet. Yeah. I wanted to go I was going to say that on, that is a very uh, solid. Hail Mary throw. Well, Con- Konshu... Uh, main force or like not sideline i don't know if we'll see yeah yeah well you know you know what i'm talking about i mean also <laughs> that ghost rider that was previewed that's a top 32 figure that that wonder, figure is insane unknown. i think it's more interesting if we go unknown let's go we'll unknown. go unknown i'm just saying like called. based on the parameters those two are like i mean yeah they're yeah. they're top 32 yeah. figures there's no question um, I'll I'll do a dark horse here, and I'll say I bet something from the Guardians Christmas. So we did preview three of them. Okay, but I bet something okay. out of the what ten, twelve. I don't uh, say it's twelve. I really hope 12, it's twelve. I think. Twelve yeah. days of Christmas. Okay, I would yeah, see, I'll yeah. say like one out of those twelve, or maybe like a few of them make something that'll make a a team in the top thirty-two for sure. Just mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know, like maybe a Peter Quill Yondu. If we get I mean, another like, Yondu that can do like the whistle arrow thing, like basically a Hawkeye effect. Yeah, I saw. Well, I mean, just basing off like Drax had like a thirty or forty point line. Yeah, yeah, that he thirty had, point no yeah, shape change, like, empower no shape change, and then he could like let go of like an object to also give everybody next to him plus one damage. So he's potentially plus two damage and no shape change or something. So just like stuff like that, if there's more of that kind of effect, I could see some like real cheap tech pieces being used. Yeah, absolutely. My so when you said uh, Simeon, when you said dark horse pick. I was like, oh my gosh, is he gonna say like someone from Wheels that's like riding a dark horse? Because that'd be so Sleep near. funny. Yeah, um, my dark yes, horse pick near. Is <laughs> near. The actual horse that is dark in color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be really funny. Um. 
But I would say my pick is going to be Shark Namor. I think it'd be really, really sick if Shark Namor I could see is that, just yeah. nuts. Yeah, especially with uh, Camo being as cool as he is, especially with that all water map that yeah, we saw. That's true. Um, I'm really hoping Shark Namor is just nuts, and we can see him in like top 32. Well, that'd that, be really that'll sick. be our only modern Namor, right? We didn't get anything in Avengers Forever, Avengers 60th. I think you're right. Yeah, that's a yeah. I, he's, Andy's a chase, which. Right. Yeah, you're right. This is going to be our. We currently have no name. My is dark Namor. horse pick without no more, no more, no more. I don't. I, I really, I really hope that the headless horseman is good. If he was a meta figure, I'd dark be horse, thrilled. good stuff. <laughs> I I, I, I know that's no pun intended on no, that one, but really, I, I hope he's good. He looks really fun. He is, he is going to be actually a pretty bright horse when the lights are off. So, yeah. not sure how much I'm of it is hero glow. His sculpt is so good. He is on an so, orange. It is so cool. So. Give me a it give me an excuse so to put him on the map. Get him in the top thirty-two, and yes. I'll try it. Did we see if he was a chase? Because I I remember from like I think he's a uh, super rare. I think he had yeah think he, he had the chase. super rare tab okay i remember like we got we got to take a close look look at the twinkie bases at nationals and there's like wolverine was a chase i think namor was a wolverine chase. namor Flipner was a chase slept near. okay the horse yeah the big horse was a, chase. Surfer was a chase and then there was like king shark was also just there yeah like, oh yeah <laughs> he was just like yeah, i was he was just hanging, hanging out. out with the rest of them um just chilling bro how about you oh nothing bro man okay there's let's, gonna be a uh, lot of crazy stuff see. though for sure let's see so simi is saying someone from the guardians of the galaxy box i'm saying namor shark yeah, and simi is saying uh headless horseman well let's uh meet back in roughly a year and we'll see who's right or wrong <laughs> well yeah, i mean we'll see. it's so hard to guess like the the dice stuff in deadpool i mean yeah, we don't I, even know if that's an every what, character thing or if this what, literally like, just that? That gets that. That's going to be... Because if, yeah, if Deadpool I don't know. just gets to, like, roll three dice like Spider-Man from War of the Realms, <laughs> then, like, that's not going to... Well, That'll it, probably it, be pretty good. It, I mean, it might be as good as Spider-Man, but we've I don't think I've ever seen that Spider-Man even at Nationals in the top 32 or anything. Oh, well, yeah, so, I mean, Outwit just know. eviscerates him. But, uh, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait on more details for that. Because, man, I mean, like, new mechanics can just completely shake up the game. So there, this could be that. There will be a Wolverine with special dice, and it says, your opponent must roll these dice, and their edges are razor blades. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and attack me. <laughs> roll that breakaway. <laughs> just cause I'm the best Simeon, at what I do. Like- me and Ian are locked in a dark room, chained to a table. Simeon on TV. You'll see a game of hero clicks before you. The dice you have to roll have laser blades. The first person to win 300 gets to leave. The loser dies. Happy playing, gentlemen. And it's like, no, 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 no wait. And it's like, I don't have any pain damage. We have to roll dice. Calder, I'm sorry. It just like, ugh, yikes. You both really uh, liked rolling dice in life. Now I hope you really enjoy rolling dice for life. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's a good thing I brought my entire kid Thanos team. Uh, I just oh, have genius. this in my back pocket at all times. I uh, keep them on me. I wear them like a necklace. Both of you thought it was funny when you beat me in states. Now we'll see who's <laughs> laughing as you play for all the stakes. <laughs> oh my! God. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Good. Horror yeah, movie. We just did a, we just did a free, uh, our movies. We just did free Saw 10 publicity, so we'll, we'll accept our check here any anytime. Lots of sponsors on this episode. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, We're sponsored. making that, raking yeah. in that cash. The Lawful Good Paladin asks, many other collectible games have comparable video games. Example, Calder's least favorite TCG is similar to CIV, which I don't know what <laughs> that is. Civ? Flesh and Blood. Fox. What's that? Civ 4? Oh, Civs, like yeah, civilian. Civ. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, that game rocks. Flesh and Blood TCG is similar to Street Fighter. What style of video game would you compare HeroClix to? To someone who knows nothing about the game. I assume by the game, he means HeroClix. Yeah. I think there's some obvious ones. Simeon, you've mentioned a lot in the past. I'll let you yeah, get yeah. into those Luke if you want to. immediately responded to this, and I can't 
disagree at all. XCOM, more specifically XCOM 2, I think. Um, probably the... Cause I've, I've played a lot Midnight of video Suns. games looking for like a hero click comparison, and XCOM is the closest thing I've ever found to a turn-based grid pattern um, hero clicks kind of like style game. It's still missing a lot of the things that I'd love to see, but it's as close as you can possibly get uh, with like a major developer behind it, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. And if you want the superhero aspects of it, like Midnight Suns is pretty much. It's a less in depth clone of XCOM, but it's, it has superheroes. It's by the same team, right? I think so. I, I picked it up on sale recently and I've been playing it on and off and enjoying it quite a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty comparable. I, I remember getting really excited when I found out it was the same people that did XCOM. And then I got less excited when I saw it was like a card deck kind of thing. But I still, I'm planning on picking it up once it like drops. $15 right now. Ooh. Still. Um, the answer I had for it is a much older game. It came out in 1992. It's called Shining Force, which is like a turn base uh, fighter, but it is on a grid. Like you move your characters, it's like an over the top view. And uh, so you move your force, and then the people you're fighting against move theirs. There's uh, like minimal equipment in the game, so you don't have to worry too much about that. A few characters have like spells or different attacks, and you can also like build your team as you go in the game it's it's one of my favorite games ever i've beaten it uh way too many times but it is a very i think pretty close to hero clicks in the sense where you're like literally on a grid and you know turn base as well so if you haven't played that one uh check it out it's pretty easy to find and there's also three of them if you like them so that'd be my comparison okay right on uh, I'm not as well versed uh, in a lot of these style of games, so I am going to reference one that I don't fully know. But in Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people, I forget which episode, the Poop Smith challenges you to a board game, and it is very similar to Hero Clicks. All of the characters are other people from the Homestar Runner universe. And they all have their own special abilities, and they move not really on a grid, but on like this hexagonal pattern board. Um, and so, for the games that I've played in my life, that is what I would say is the most accurate to Hero Clicks. I honestly cannot find footage of it anywhere. I was trying to like look. I'm looking like right now, I'm trying to go through someone's playthrough. Somewhere in one of these five episodes of Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People. Um, he plays. He has like forced to play this game against the Poop Smith. It's really cool. They each have their own special abilities. I think I when I played it, I was like, "Oh, this is kind of like Hero Clicks." So that's weird. Yep, that's that's what I have every time I call my mom after because uh, I call her every time after I'm done playing Hero Clicks at my local venue. Uh, every time I call her after playing Calder, that's how I always describe it: is that hey, I I had to play against the Poop Smith again. Uh, of course. For a second there, I was hoping you were going to say the uh, cool and attractive guy, but no, I understand. No, Poop Smith, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, for for a mobile game, because I am the mobile game master. Uh, you really are. And by that, I mean I just download anything. By that, I mean me. I'm in debt. <laughs> they send me an ad, and I try it. Uh, but Barnard's Star, so B A R N A R D, uh, comma S Star. Barnard's Star. I think it's a pay-to-play game. I think you have to buy it, not pay-to-play. You don't have to pay to play, but I think you do have to buy it. There's, like, four factions, and then each faction has uh, multiple options for, like, what you can build with. Let me just look through it real quick here. Um, so, yeah, you can play as, like, humans, critters, robots, or there's, like, some other option. Uh, and then it's... It's a grid-based game. It's not as good as Heroclix. Obviously, it's way, way, way worse. But there's certain options that are, like, really cool, like dropping, like, they have things similar that are, like, poison. They have characters that can do charge or leap climb effects. They have uh, almost every faction has a character that can do, like, a grapple gun kind of thing. And that's pretty cool. So, yeah, like, right now I'm rocking the commando who is just a dude with a knife and every time he KOs like an opposing character he can he's basically vulture if he KOs an opposing character he gets to KO another or go up and like attack another character and he can keep doing that as often as he KOs him 
uh, but he only does three damage, and everyone starts with the same amount of like five health. Rocketeer does an energy explosion. Uh, there's people that drop like oil, and then if you do an explosive thing where that oil is, it creates like a long lasting fire effect. Same with the acid people. Uh, but yeah, there's let's see two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, ten units per faction, three factions, so 30 units total, and then each team is made up of four of those units per faction. So you can't mix and match, but it's interesting. It's not a terrible game. I'll just say it, it is a mobile game, so <laughs> if you're listening to this and like, wow, that sounds like... No, it's not. Um, I I play it when I have like 30 minutes in between things to do. Or when I'm very bored and listening to a podcast, then I'll play it. Uh, the online matchmaking for it is like essentially uh, HC Realms play to post. You you join a matchup, you get matched up, and then within 24 hours you have to make your move, and then in 24 hours your opponent has to make their move. So it's like that. It's bad. I don't like the online, uh, but playing against AI is kind of fun. So. Okay, right on. That you were like almost selling me on it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, that's pretty cool." But then you had to hit us with the reality, like, "No, but don't worry, it is still a mobile game, so it's bad." It is. I was um, like, "Oh yeah, different like abilities and ooh poison and ooh ah." There, but, yeah, uh, I would say like if you're if you're a big mobile gamer and you haven't tried it and you're willing to spend like the five bucks for it or whatever it was, uh, definitely worth a shot. But if you're not into, like, turn-based strategy, I watched... So one of the cool things about it, I should say, uh, and this will be the last thing I say on it, you can watch the top-ranked plays, like, the top-ranked matches. And so these are people that literally play this game constantly. Like, this would be like watching our worlds if the top two players were constantly playing. The top two ranked players just oh, constantly cool. did okay. live stream matches. You can just watch these games anytime they happen. Uh, not live, they're like, it's a replay. Um, the tech that they were using was insane to me. Like, a lot of, essentially, barrier. So there's, there's barrier-type options where you just drop, like, barrier. And then you can't just destroy barrier, or most characters can't. You have to, like, tap it twice, and you can only do one tap per turn. So it's kind of rough, but it was a lot of, like, toss out barrier, move over here, toss out oil. And I was like, what is going on? And then I was like... <laughs> 30 minutes later and I still have no clue because like that's how fresh to this game I am and how much I just kind of want to like be blasty blast charge up yeah. kind of guy which is like that's how I always play any game but yeah like that's how I play and like these guys are using incredible like tactics that are just highly defensive and I just cannot keep up I'm like I don't know what's happening all I can tell is there's like 12 traffic cones and way more oil than there needs to be on this map but it is fun. It is interesting. I just, if you're not willing to pay or don't think you, I, I watch a couple videos, see if you think you might like it. Sure. You buy it, I guess. And then the very last question we have from old Chef Mikey, he's asking, now this is a question we always love to get on the show, an endless amount of times so you can send us this question. Is there any non-Marvel, non-DC property that you would like as a Heroclix set? Uh, I'll run down my two that I always say, and that is Evil Dead slash Army of Darkness. Uh, I literally could die happy forever and ever uh, the day after we get an Evil Dead Army of Darkness set, and I get to play it, because that is all I've ever wanted in Hero Clicks ever. It's so sick, so cool. I'd love it. The other one is Team Fortress 2. I think having a bunch of equipment for all the weapons, I think you could make the classes a really cool, consistent uh, design. I've made an entire Team Fortress 2 set, myself before for just like the main nine classes i think you do a lot with the robots a lot with the comic books i mean there's actually like a ton of lore for tf2 and i think it'd be awesome and then last certainly not least would be doom or just doom eternal where you just make the doom guy a ton of demons the boss demons uh you could do some side characters like alex hayden um i forget his ai's name but he eventually gets like a body uh you could do that and then, yeah, just, like, all the demons. And they'd make for some just amazing sculpts. That'd be sick. So, yeah. But with the Doom, uh, Evil Dead 2. 2 set, it'd be really cool if it came in, like, an Iconic-style box, and it was, like, the orange box. Ooh. I know that in other games, yeah. but... Yeah. 
could be a fun way if to we do got it. A, like a an orange box but it is like portal 2 tf2 and then like half-life 2 and it's like shell and then like the portal 2 guys peabody in the round one uh, uh, maybe like, like a watch portal style equipment. box where you unfold yeah, it and just have a massive like, watcher yeah. style box and it's like the orange box that would literally be so sick. That'd With be so portals cool. on each side, like over the. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that could be all right. Lots of Please. lots of free ideas this week. Now <laughs> let's make it. Let's make it. The orange box has never been more popular since 2007 than it ever has been in 2023. Let's make it, Wiz Kids. Let's do it. Let's let's make it happen. What about um, you guys? What's a non model yeah. DC non? Uh, yeah. Property I've said it a lot. I know you guys aren't big fan of it or fans of it, but League of Legends, if they ever made a set of that, I don't even really play anymore. It's been years, but uh, I love the characters in there. I love all their like personalizations and lore. No, they just they always been a really Dota good fan of the art. Yeah, they did Dota. What are you talking about, Ian? That's like the yeah, same they thing. Did Dota too. Is that <laughs> like the? Dude? Is that like the prequel? Is that not League of Legends? League League of Legends <laughs> Dota two. Is that not the same? I don't know how many times I have to say this, but we're not getting into it. <laughs> no, I think League of Legends would be really fun. My other go-to answer for this is always Mortal Kombat. I think that would be just so cool. Like, give us a, a Scorpion Sub-Zero Iconics box set. That would just make my life. And, you know, so many iconic moments in that. Uh, a few others. I think Spawn. People have been asking for Spawn since I was literally like four or five years old. So I think that's a good choice. Uh, Harvey Birdman because he's just the best. I mean, we got Space Ghost. Maybe Harvey Birdman can fly in as well. And then the okay. last one. This was a, a newer one. I think it would be cool to see the character. If you guys remember the game Infamous. Oh uh, yeah. A little bit older, but uh, Cole McGarth from that I think could be pretty oh, fun. The that comic based, uh, yeah, comic based like, gosh, I can't remember game. if it was like PlayStation exclusive. It was a PlayStation was, exclusive. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. 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 Lightning the, Boy the six himself. axis controller technology to <laughs> control his tornadoes. That was he like, was a, uh, that game was sick. Yeah, it was a really cool game. game. He's got a great biggest, story. Uh, yeah. And I Infamous think he could be a lot of too. fun. I think he'd be sick. I think, uh, obviously, since you have to have a Prime version or an alternate version, if you did an Iconics of him, and of course, since I'm the biggest Dracula fan, uh, and played the Infamous <laughs> DLC where he turns into a vampire, yeah, that'd vampire be pretty sick. DLC. That, that was so <laughs> wild, where it's like, yeah, the electric power guy. Yeah, now he's a vampire. I was like, what? Huh? I don't he, think went I to, he went to one. Mardi Gras, so it makes sense. Yeah. Just go with it. <laughs> so it's wild like that's kind of how like the red dead like thing you felt too where it's like yeah no now there's zombies and also the four horses of the apocalypse uh, plus the other one uh are here in the game as well and it's like what what this is a western game what are we? i just love the uh the old style of just the most absurd dlcs to a main game that are actually just well, a ton the of thing fun. i really appreciate about the red dead uh undead nightmare dlc that was yeah. so fun. they just like oh it was sick they cut like midway into the normal game story so if you're playing that along in the story there is a perfect moment where you can switch over to that dlc and it actually still makes well it doesn't make sense but it like at least like flows uh but like it's it is just weird where he's just like Oh, like, sorry about uh, taking up lodging in your house here. I'll be on my way. Oh, my gosh, it's zombies. And then, like, half the characters that are, like, big important parts of, like, the main storyline just, like, die from zombies. And you're like, well, I don't really know wow. where I'm supposed to go because it seems like the world ended. And part of the main storyline was, like, the world not ending. Yeah, so... No, but I agree. I think uh, Cole McGrath, Cole McGrath, what was I kind of forgot his name, but Cole, it would be a sick character. He'd have some cool lightning effects. I like that. It's like he like uh, glided on power lines. That was like a big yeah. way of travel in that game. That was so much fun. Very I mean, Sonic be super fun. It, oh, it is Sonic it is, Circle yeah. or whatever the heck that. Yeah, is Sonic like whatever. glide. I don't. I just really doesn't make sense that Sonic that could was, do that. He, like, even though it was on like shoes. unrealistic and. Silly as it was, I think that was the closest way to bringing like web slinging to a non Spider Man game and mm. making traveling fun that they could do. And it was just very. Yeah, I would the like Batman to... games, though. The Batman, the oh, gliding, sure. the grapple gun. Tough that, to beat. Yeah. 
Mm, that's fair. Not, that not to you know fun. have a competition here, but that's oh, I love it. But Spider Man obviously wins out. Those games are the most fun to traverse. Yeah, yeah, Spider Man makes too it much so fun. fun to yeah to whip around. Uh, non Marvel property. Uh, I mean, there's an endless one amount of like ones that I would say. First, I would go with is probably a game called Barnard Star. So the cool yeah. thing about this game is you can play as multiple factions. <laughs> We, no. Simeon, please no. We no. <laughs> don't. Please don't. Uh, I can't do it. Gosh. No, there's a ton of like. So I think I last time I said something. This last time this question was asked, I said something like, um, "We were talking about non-IP related stuff," and I was talking about like famous historical characters like Rasputin, Napoleon, stuff like that. I still think that'd be really fun, especially like if you can find silly ones like. Obviously, Vlad Dracul, uh, what's his real name? Um, the Impaler, Vlad the Impaler. Uh, those are like very iconic characters in history where they're just like infamous. We don't really know what they did or like, you know, it was before actual like photographs and stuff were going on. And then there's like Rasputin, who's just like a very silly man in history. I don't know if he was really important or not, but he did some wacky stuff. That's pretty fun. There's a lot of fun stuff to work with there. Um, certain historical characters we can't use, so that's what it is. But like, there's there's also like iconic. You know, we talked about uh, like Paul Bunyan. Uncle Sam was technically a real guy, but the actual like yeah. ooh he was yeah. So he's based off of okay. like an actual real human, but the iconography of Uncle Sam like transcended that actual man and i think that's like you know pecos bill obviously lassoing a tornado the tornado yeah uh, um yeah john henry and the hammer uh beating the machine that would be like that so stuff. sick get like a plus one speed if someone with the robot or armor keyword is on the opposing team <laughs> i don't know are they using the vehicle keyword does that ghost rider have the vehicle keyword could he just modify his stats like by a bunch their yeah. vehicle sick. yeah yeah Let's get a Paul Bunyan and Babe too. Just yeah. do the full set of Americana lore. That'd be do- I I love this. This is dope. I can't wait till yeah. Literally the year where Worlds is King Kong versus Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox <laughs> is going to be like that'll be the best finals match in Worlds. Where yeah, our 1950s King Kong flocked King Kong versus flocked Babe the Blue Ox yes. with Paul Bunyan with actual razor blade axe. <sighs> Simeon, you're really big on the razor blades yeah, being added. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's the only thing I can think. You know, I'm, you're very edgy today. I'm pitching <laughs> my myself to Whiz Kids, and I'm like, you guys thought of flocked, but have you thought of like? Blades. Same. <laughs> With the I mean, thought blades. of like a lawsuit. <laughs> Actual you about litigation. <laughs> Have you thought about like tiny little crossbows that shoot actual crossbow bolts? Right? Kids love no, it's things cool. like that. It's like Gulliver's Travels. See? It's fun. Yeah. It's like, it no. can't kill you, only blind you or cause pain. Uh, also, oh, terrible gosh. if I swallowed, but. No, I, I do think. Uh, Classic Americana stories. Obviously, there's a ton of lore. The Grimm Brothers, like, stories have, like, a ton Mm. of stuff. Most of that's just, like, weird witches and more, like, morale, moral, moral tales. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, So there's not, like, a ton of stuff, but you can get creative and just, like, kind of, you know, the Hansel and Gretel story or movie with Jeremy Renner uh, is pretty fantastical compared to, like, the actual storyline, but... Very good movie, very fun. Not like realistic or really even like good, but very fun. Right. Well, right on. I I'm literally game for all that stuff. All the free IP grab as much as we can. Hundred percent more realistic uh, answers than Simeon or than Ian and I's. So I'm all for it. But ladies and gentlemen, that is all of our questions we have this show. Thank you so much to the listeners, the Patreon members. For asking these questions, I think it adds a lot to our show. I think it really uh, helped us fill out the episode, talk about a bunch of cool stuff that we wanted to talk about. So thank you so much, guys. And most of all, thank you so much for supporting Dial H for Hero Clicks. I already did a little Patreon spiel earlier, so I'm not going to get into it again. But, you know, if you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, there's more ways than just on the Patreon. If you 
want, you can go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, wherever podcasts are found. I think they do comments on Podbean as well, but a five-star review is huge. It goes a long way for more people finding the podcast and listening to it. So that would be a great help, a free way to support us. Another way is subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking and commenting on videos. I'm not saying you got to be like, wow, cool video. Wow, cool video. Wow, cool video. But, you know, if you think of a fun comment that, like, could promote some cool discussion, by all means, please do it on our videos. That's huge. Liking, sharing, things like that. Uh, Sharing to your play group, local group, even on your, like, public Facebook or whatever channels, stuff like that. Um, Just, you know, liking our Facebook page, following us on Instagram, stuff like that. That's a huge way to support us in a non-financial way if you don't want to join the Patreon. So we would, of course, appreciate it, and we appreciate all the people that already are supporting us in those ways. It seriously means a lot to us, guys. Yeah, there's. I was looking for this earlier this week because I wasn't sure. So I used to, I used to listen through Stitcher to all things. Now I have to use Spotify and Pocket Casts. Uh, okay. And I, I still don't know if Pocket Casts has a way to. So I can download. I can add it to like play next i can mark as played i can archive it is there a way to i don't i don't know if there's a way to rate on pocket yeah there is okay there's a way to rate on pocket cast it takes a lot to like find these at least for me maybe i'm just bad at looking but i did find on uh good old spotify that you have to do the the little three dots next to the settings button in the main show page to find where like rate the show is and then i don't find it anymore but i did find a q and a thing where like you could also i don't know if it was like add a question or just i don't know what it was if it was like leave a review but it said q and a i thought about trying it and now i can't find it so maybe that was for the best but yeah there is a way to rate them. I just, for the longest time thought there was no rating system on spotify so for sure but yeah, that it is, is kind of weird now that you like say that. It is it, like it's hard to find. Oddly hard, hard, to, hard find. to find. Most programs, most like podcast things have the star rating right under the actual podcast. And so if you click on the actual podcast, you just see like what the star rating is, but there's no way to interact with that other than like going out and searching for it, I guess. Um uh, hmm. But if you want to go out yeah, and search, a good place to start, good place to start with uh, if you need some games, if you need some singles or sealed products, that's right. It's CoolStuffInc.com. We're using code DIAL5. We'll get you 5% off. I just bought a ludicrous amount of singles from Cool Stuff, and they were all goons. Uh, we talked about this before the show, but I won't reveal how much I spent on goons. Just know I wanted a lot. I am going to receive a lot of goons. And you can receive a lot of goons, too. And you can save 5% off if you use code DIAL5 when shopping at CoolStuffInc.com. And if you want to go direct to the source, uh, you can buy non-pre-release products or specialty items or iconics and use code Dial H10 when you go to shop.wizkids.com. That'll save you 10% off of any orders from Heroclix products that aren't the aforementioned pre-releases, uh, specialty figures, or iconics. So, yeah, now that it's no longer pre-release, you can get some Notorious. Or uh, I just received my Nightfall and stuff. That was all pre-release and iconics, so that doesn't count. I didn't get to use the code. But you can order that stuff and add it to the order as well. So... Yeah, check them out. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, six yeah, people over. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Yeah. I think the poop smith is cool. I think that's honorable, actually. I, I'm the I'd biggest Dracula fan. I'm the biggest Dracula fan.